Um, all right, I guess we can just start then. So uh, session 34, I was thinking it was 35, but it's 34. I don't know why I thought it was 35. Maybe just, uh, I don't know, getting ahead of myself. But um, last time you guys had uh, been in the Amber Temple and um, Casimir had just gotten his uh, intended uh, dark gift of uh, resurrection. And uh, you guys decided to do a little more exploring and uh, continue to look for the object foretold by Madame Eva, uh, and you did indeed find a treasure room, and just as you were starting to explore it, uh, these uh, vampire spawns burst out of these crates in the adjacent room, and uh, a big combat, s combat started with them, and uh, there was all sorts of fun with them climbing the walls, and uh, at one point you cast a spell, freezing them into place, uh, but they still proved to be fairly <clears throat> formidable opponents. Uh, I know there were several times when you guys were close to death, and um, towards the end of the combat, uh, this uh, ancient skeletal figure walked down from the staircase, spiral staircase from the level above, uh, which really freaked the other vampires out, surprisingly. Um, it didn't join in combat. It just seemed to politely stand out of your way <laughs> while you finished off the vampires. Um, you know, once they were destroyed, uh, you kind of... Uh, cautiously approached it and found uh, that it basically it was a lich but uh, it seemed to have uh, gotten some sort of amnesia or uh, some form of um, curse or something that was preventing it from remembering it didn't even remember what its name was um, but it uh, seemed friendly enough and it, um, apparently lonely obviously spending a lot of time by itself in the amber temple not a lot of visitors i'm sure um, so you guys took him up on his offer to allow you to uh, take a long rest in his quarters. So he led you up there, and uh, you did so. And uh, in the process of looking around uh, you uh, and asking about, you found a spell book from him uh, that looked like it was his, and on the name of it was, uh, or on the front of it was apparently his name, Exathanter. Um, so uh, it, it with some questioning, uh, you figured out that probably uh, casting some sort of remove curse spell would re restore his memories so uh, after a little bit of de debate and hesitation you're like eh, should we really revive a lich back to full power but uh he didn't seem very threatening so you went to went for broke and uh cast remove curse and indeed he did uh, uh remember everything after that uh, his character did subtly change uh, he was a little bit less befuddled and um easygoing and a little i don't know how to describe it more than he was maybe a little bit more evil but he still was very grateful for you to restore his for restoring his memories, and uh, he agreed to take you on a full walking tour of the rest of the temple. Uh, as being escorted, uh, nothing bothered you. Uh, none of the temple defenses kicked in. Apparently, uh, he was uh, a remaining guardian of the place from way way back when, long before Strahd even arrived in the valley. So, um, so anyway, um, you guys, uh, after getting a full rest and getting your feet back, uh, you decided to proceed and leave from the temple. Before you did, though, there was this uh, tremendous boom and uh, what sounded like an avalanche, and you confirmed that uh, something had brought down an avalanche that sealed the entrance. But, luckily for you, uh, Van Richten had um, stayed behind, and uh, he actually used his saber tooth tiger to dig a hole uh, into the entrance, allowing you guys to actually escape the temple. Uh, and so you guys uh, decided to leave the temple and uh, move on to greener pastures, as it were. Uh, so you, Casimir, and uh, Van Richten, and his tiger uh, were leaving the temple and uh, getting into his uh, wagon, which uh, was is pulled by his uh, horse, who he named uh, Drusilla. Oh, the tiger's name is Felicity, by the way. <laughs> he named the tiger Felicity. And it's actually an armored saber tooth tiger. So it's not just a tiger. It's actually got a full suit of plate mail armor on it, too. Wow. So it looks kind of badass. But um, so anyway, yeah, you guys are loading up. Uh, it's still quite cold. Not as cold as in the Amber Temple, but uh, you guys are glad you have your winter gear on. And um, there is only room up front uh, so one could ride with Van Richten in front if you want. Uh, the rest of you guys would have to kind of go into the wagon with Tiger. So if is there somebody who wants to ride in the front with Van Richten, or do you not care? I'll do it. I'll do it. Okay. All right, Clytus, go ahead. All right, yeah, no other takers. Uh, sure, Van Richten welcomes you into the front it's basically just a big bench uh atop this uh, multicolored wagon. and you remember it's uh rictavio's traveling not circus but uh, 
It's kind of like a carnival wagon. So you guys are. Holy crap! What was that? I don't know. Something was really noisy. Uh, it was loud. I was trying to clean my camera, and it's not working, evidently. Um, while I'm sitting with Rictavio, I'm going to pump him for info. Okay. Uh, so the rest of you guys get back in the back of the wagon, and uh, he heads off with all speed. Uh, what kind of uh, information were you going to ask him? Esmeralda. Esmeralda. I'm going to make it clear that I still want to, you know. I want her. You want her. <laughs> to save her. Well, to save her butt, you know. Is the, her butt specifically, yeah. Just, just that specific part of her, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I want to save her, and so I want to pump him for info. Like, you know, like he seems to think that ain't gonna happen, but I want to see. You know. Oh uh, well, Esmeralda was. Well, we have a bit of history. Um, when she was a young girl, her family was, or her family kidnapped my boy, who's named er was Erasmus, and uh, delivered him into the hands of a vampire. Wait, don't we know Erasmus? Uh, you've never met anyone named Erasmus. No. Uh, you, that name is... you may have uh, read, if you recall, in the to in the tower where Van Richten had yeah. been staying at one point, you found one page of uh, Van Richten's journal, which may have mentioned it. I can't actually remember. I'd have to look it up. But okay. uh, but you've not met anyone named Erasmus, and um, right. that'll actually come clear. And uh, Van Richten says that uh, well, after his son was delivered into the hands of this vampire by uh, Esmeralda's family. He, uh, he managed to track that family down, um, but it was after his son had already been sold off. And uh, he was said he was sorely tempted to kill the Vistani right then and there, but instead he interrogated uh, Esmeralda's mother and father as to where his son was. And once he was satisfied with their answers, he spared their lives before departing with the information they'd given him. Uh, apparently when their family had uh, done whatever her family had done had troubled Esmeralda greatly and uh, at the age of 15 she ran away from home uh, my act of mercy must have made some sort of impression two years later after many adventures she tracked me down uh, thinking she was some sort of Istani assassin I put a sword to her throat and threatened to spill her blood but she convinced me that she genuinely wanted to help me find my missing son Alas, on that count, she was too late, as by that point I had already found er Erasmus turned into a vampire spawn, and at his own pleading, I ended his doomed existence. <clears throat> Nevertheless, Esmeralda retained, uh, remained by my side for two full years, uh, helping me track down and slay many creatures of the night. Uh, perhaps because I could never bring myself to fully trust a Vistana, I kept uh, secrets from her, and we began to get on each other's nerves, and our arguments became more frequent. And at last, uh, she suggested that we part company with some shred of our th friendship still intact. Uh, because I valued her friendship, and perhaps fearing the Vistani curse that still lies upon me, dooming all who befriend me, I, I agreed to that. So we said our goodbyes, and I have not seen her since that time. Now you're saying that she actually must have followed me here to Barovia and yep. become captured by the Devil's Strad. Yep. Well, from what I know of Strahd himself, uh, he he does not take prisoners without uh, intending some sort of foul purpose for them. Yep. Well, if worse comes to worse, I'll take her down myself, but I prefer to save her if you can. Yes. And I would assume that he was interested in her to find out the whereabouts of myself. I have yes. <laughs> many means of avoiding uh, his detection even while in his realm, but um, if uh, if she's been captured, well, she she may know that I'm here because she found obviously the tower where I had been staying. So if well, nothing I'll else, tell him everything she told us because she mentioned she was trying to hook up with him again. Right, but she may. Did you? She would not know about my disguise. No, she did not. In she that case, it probably is best that I resume that mode. <laughs> he, okay. he pulls out his uh, hat of disguise and pops it back on his head, and whoop, he's now Rectavio again. Okay. Uh, but uh, he says that it is probably fortunate that uh, we did not meet until after you and she had parted company. 
But I agree. Yeah. If if there's anything that we can do to save her, we should. But I fear the worst. So where are you from? Um, I'm from many places, many planes. If you recall, if I told stories of some of those uh, back at the inn when I first uh, met your acquaintance. Yeah, but, but originally, where are you from? Oh, it's so far back in the mists of time, I, I don't remember. If I recall, I believe it was Faroon. Mm. But... Uh, I spent a lot of I spent a lot of time traveling with my family even as a youth, so where we originally came from, it's hard to say. Meaning the DM doesn't know. <laughs> All, right. Nice. All right, well that's basically it. Um so he had also goes into a little bit about um what hap what he saw with Strahd outside because if you remember he had originally left you guys he was going to actually go and see if he could yeah. try and find out what happened for sure with esmeralda uh but then he saw something he saw strad going into the temple or coming out of the temple um with rahadin um he saw he said he saw them stop outside the temple and begin speaking he couldn't hear what they were actually saying but it looked to be escalating into some sort of argument actually uh, and whatever pact Strahd made with the dark powers in the temple to bring Rahadin back, it, it did something to alter his what? nature. Uh, he no longer appeared to be fully under Strahd's control. He was gesturing angrily at the temple several times with Strahd shaking his hey, head. Paul? Yeah. Paul Toucher can't hear you, and apparently you can't hear him. Oh. Yeah, Sorry. his uh, link is frozen. <laughs> Um, I hear him. Yeah, I hear him. Yeah, I hear both of you, but he, you guys can't hear each other. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Yeah, he's frozen. <laughs> it's weird. Okay, let me um, tell him to hang up, and I'll, I'll uh, redial so him in. Hang up, and he'll call you right back. That was weird. Yeah, it was. His, it's just his screen was frozen. So, because Paul just started talking, and I was like, uh, what's going on? There we go. Can you hear me, Paul? Yep. Awesome. That's where it's like, I, I, I hear Tim breathing. I can hear him say something. And I like, who the heck's talking? <laughs> okay. All right. All of my... Everyone's picture, of course, moved all over the place. I got to re rearrange everybody again. Sorry. No, it's okay. It's VC. I don't know. Why that's the first time it's really done that. Weirdness, weirdness, weirdness. Okay, anyway. Uh, so how much of that did you catch, Paul? Uh, I kept asking, well, where are we going? What are we doing? Because nobody was saying anything. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. We, yeah, well. You can tell me where we're going. Yeah, you, well, right now you're in the wagon, in uh, Van Richten's okay. wagon, and uh, he, right. Tim's, uh, Clytus is sitting up front with him, and they were talking. They were yeah. talking about Esmeralda for a little bit. Yeah, and, I heard that. Okay, and then he was uh, going into what happened, what he saw when Strahd left the temple with uh, right. Rahadin. Oh, okay. Um, and something. And they got to do an argument. Yeah, it looked like the, whatever happened uh, to bring Rahadin back, it no longer, he didn't any longer seem to be fully under Strahd's control. Uh, they were having some sort of argument where Rahadin was like gesturing at the temple and Strahd was shaking his head trying to get him back to con convince him to get on his nightmare. Uh, and finally, Rahadin turned to face the temple and called forth some sort of power. That, like uh, uh, Van Richten described it as an unholy choir of screaming voices that rose up like thunder. And you guys recall the last time you ran into Rahadin, he had that weird thing where you could hear all these lamenting voices, but it never got that loud and in fact it, it was loud enough that it actually triggered an avalanche and buried the entrance to the temple mm. so something changed um with rahadin but after that uh, he seemed to be satisfied and got on the horse and left us dry what was that i think my ice maker maybe that was the avalanche <laughs> In the, in the kitchen? Apparently. Holy cow. Wow. That's like <laughs> good timing. Like Twenty some feet away. Oh. It was even louder than that. Um anyway, yeah. So he got on the horse or he got on the Strad's nightmare and they 
flew off back towards uh, Castle Ravenloft, apparently. Um, um, I'm going to ask Van Richten about, uh, I'm going to tell him about uh, Strahd's weird obsession with um, Irina. Irina would be who? I'm sorry, what was her name? The the sister. Yes, that, that, I, mean, I was being Van Richten there, but um, yeah, he does. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. No, I wasn't sure if that was her name. The DM's not You're that right. clueless. He may not know where Van Richten was born, but... <laughs> Uh, yeah, he. Well, I was yes, but I was clueless. So, <laughs> um, so I but I tell him about Irina and how we met her and her whole thing, and that Strahd seems weirdly obsessed with her. And the doll and all of that. Yeah, the doll and all that weirdness. The doll. And ask him if he knows anything about it. Remember the doll that the toy maker was being forced to make and. Oh, that was um, Isaac's obsession, if you recall. Right, no, but Isaac, but yeah, but Strahd, like there was that whole thing we saw something in the sky where he was like, "You will be mine" and all that. That was Strahd. Oh, yeah, that? right. Yes, that was the, the doll thing. Wrong. Yeah, the doll thing was not Strahd. That was Isaac just obsessed right. with it because it, she was actually his sister. Um, but oh, as yeah. far, but as far as um, Strahd's obsession, um. He is actually a bit curious about that, too. Uh, he says that from what he's learned, there was a woman that he was in love with. Um, and she has apparently she she was betrothed to his brother, Sergei. And this was before he became a vampire. And Strahd lusted after this woman whose name was Tatiana. And... Okay. Um, she did not feel anything for him. She was happily betrothed to her, his brother, Sergei. And that this caused uh, insane jealousy in Strahd. And on the day of their wedding, the wedding of uh, Sergei and Tatiana, um, Strahd actually killed his brother, Sergei. And distraught at this, um, Tatiana threw herself from the highest peak of Castle Ravenloft committing suicide and at th this it was at this point of him c killing his brother that Strahd actually embraced the dark powers and became a vampire fully and since that time um, apparently Tatiana has been brought back by who knows what the dark powers the mists or whatever is keeping Strahd prisoner here uh, she every generation or so a woman is born who bears the likeness of Tatiana and Strahd invariably tries to win her over hmm. well killing a bunch of people ransacking her church uh, you know generally terrorizing her that's not usually considered a great way to attract somebody not generally no <laughs> unless she's an evil bitch too that's <laughs> true for me <laughs> now you you would Speaking of gaining information, now you had said that there were three things that Madam Eva had told you to seek out in preparation for a potential conflict with Strahd. One yeah. of these was obviously this sun sword that you've just found, and that's benefit obviously is obvious. Uh, you had also mentioned the holy symbol of Ravenkind, which you had found at Argenbost, yeah. and that's yeah. obviously very beneficial against fighting undead. Uh, what was the third item? What was the third item? I don't recall. Me neither. We uh, don't know yet. Um, you no, but she told us to go somewhere. Baraz. Uh, what was the... Well, if you look at the f readings, you've got the uh, the card of protection and the card of strength you've gotten so far. There's also the card of card history. Card of history, yeah. Where's the... the it... It's in the... Yeah, it's in the, yes, um, the and second under tab there. Fortunes oh. of Ravenloft. It says it tells of history, knowledge of an ancient that will help you better understand your enemy. Oh, so this might just be like a book or something. You should get that. Yeah, she said, I see a dead village drowned by a river ruled by one who has brought great evil into the world. And it's the ruins of Berez. Well, Berez is, um, yeah, it, oh, it's... it's a, didn't we mess with Baba La Saga? You did not. You have no, not actually seen. You've you've heard of her. She was 
Reportedly, the uh, Martikovs say that she um, sent scarecrows out to steal one of the gems at the, from the winery. Yeah, right, right. So we recovered one of those. But not that one. Right. Oh, yeah, so one of them says it's a sword of sunlight. The other one says it's a holy symbol of great hope. And then this one says it's knowledge of an ancient that will help you better understand your enemy. So th you might be right. This might be some sort of book or just knowledge, not necessarily right. a weapon per se. A weapon in a different sense. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think that it's always best to know your enemy, so it may be advantageous to get this. Right. Knowledge is power, dude. <laughs> Indeed. I'm sold. Um, the more you know. But you guys had also mentioned you were wanting to um, head back to Velaki or something. I can't remember what you had said or why. Well, he was. He wanted to. He mentioned the girl. He wanted to find the girl. Oh, oh right, right, right. Yeah, yes, yeah. Yeah, he was very interested, man. and and he's still, he says that he's, and he admits very freely that he has a obvious prejudice against Vistani. Uh, he does not trust Vistani. I mean, they s took his boy and sold him to a vampire, so he, he oh, very boy. obviously does not <laughs> yeah. like Vistani. And he well, we're not exactly on their Christmas card list either. So. Oh, so <laughs> do you tell him about your whole uh, falling out and? Oh yeah. yeah. Well, we, you know, they they wanted Esmeralda to punish her, and we weren't going to have it, so they're not very happy with us. Well, and you also, yeah, you killed the parents of the. We slaughtered their whole village. Yeah. Them, so. Well, you you killed <laughs> a few of them. It. She did it. <laughs> uh, yeah, the girl. Well, she did something. Um, you don't know if she killed them all or knocked them out or something, but yeah, she uh, she did something, and um, she's definitely she more on. powerful than pretty much anybody there. She went all Twilight Zone on us. And... Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, um, yeah, Van Richten's very interested in that and what part she might have to play, and uh, he's also very curious about why Madam Eva is helping you, especially since the Vistani have historically always been loyal to Strahd. But mm -hmm. I think the reason she helped us was because I saved that girl. So she gave us a free reading, wasn't it? I don't know. You had the reading um, after you saved the girl, I believe. Yeah, that's right. what I'm saying. That's what I'm so saying. She gave us the reading because we saved the girl. Oh, wait. I didn't get the, that feeling, but... No? Oh. I didn't either. Yeah, you're I didn't not... get the feeling they were tied to one another. Yeah, you guys didn't get that impression, but... Um... Hmm. In any case, uh, yeah, that, but yeah, so um, Van Richten is uh, more than willing, and he thinks that if you're going to go up against Strahd, you should arm yourselves as best you can, and Berez is, you're going to get to be able to go to Berez before you get to Velaki. Uh, it really isn't a direct route. Um, you can't really take the river to directly to Berez because there's, Serre Falls is just thousands of feet, and, you know, the road goes around, but it's still kind of on the way, so to speak. Yeah. Well, what should we be worried about when we get to Burroughs? Uh He doesn't know actually anything about it. He's had no occasion to go there. All he knows is that it was, uh, he, the locals say that it used to be a village, but uh, probably maybe about the size of Barovia, the village of Barovia. Um, but something happened there. Um, Strahd called up the river in vengeance against some slight or another and basically destroyed the town. And since then it's been shunned and avoided it's reputedly haunted and apparently based on what the martikovs have said baba lasaga lives there yeah, wow. tell us about her again he doesn't really know much other than she is reputed to be a witch of some formidable power which is another reason he's been avoiding it and uh, he's been very focused on his quest for strad so any he, he hasn't really paid much attention to the other local rumors and legends and uh, she has not crossed his path directly, so. Okay. Well, let's get rolling. All right. Well, he uh, spurs on Drusilla, um, and as he draw near the Solenka, uh, the Solenka Pass, um, he actually has Drusilla go even faster, um, and he wants to get across this thing um, as quickly as possible. Uh, he's able there. If you recall, there was a big section out in the middle of it. 
and uh, he's able to. It's there's enough bridge remaining that he's able to steer the wagon around that, um, but he wants to make all due speed across. It's still very cold, and he wants to get back before nightfall. Um, but as you're going across, you guys all hear a tremendous shriek of a very large bird descending. And oh, fucking rock. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I guess Johnson. you guys in the wagon, you, you all hear this thing, but you really can't see anything. Um, Van Richten is you know, intent on get, getting Drisella to go even faster. Um, Clytus, if you want to make a perception check to see if you can see this thing. Oh, and I'm always really good at that. Uh, let's see. Nope. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> It's uh, again one of the, it's it was almost kind of driving. I could spend my uh, inspiration. Inspiration, if you wish, you can. Yeah, what the hell? Okay, sure, why not? All right, then. Um, yes, you happen to, even though the cry echoed across all the various mountainsides, you're able to actually kind of isolate where it is, and it's basically a darker patch in this large, you know, driving snow cloud. You know, it's 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 snowing quite heavily at this point. Um, but you see this larger, darker patch come looming out of the swirling gray. And um, I'm going to give you, I'm not going to do a map based combat for this, this encounter okay. um, just because it's going to get it. It'll be complicated um, since you guys are in the wagon and everything. So, um, but I will allow you uh, one round's action before this thing reaches you. Um, yay. <laughs> I'm horrible against flying anything, so I will ready a javelin, I guess. Well, hold on. Is it an open wagon that we're in? Uh, you are riding atop, basically a bench on the top of the wagon alongside okay, Ben. I can't see the guys. No, they, everyone else is right enclosed. Inside. It's a closed wagon. It's not, it hasn't been latched, but it's the, there's a basically kind of two doors that open outward on the back that have been latched shut. And um, there, I guess there would be, no, I, yeah, I think there were there barred windows. I can't remember. Uh, but they would be on the sides if there were. There are air holes at the very least. All right. Just in case the rock decides to remove our horse from us, can I can I touch the horse at all from where, where I am? Um, he, the wagon is going at full speed. Um, I could let you try, but you would need to make a dexterity check of some sort. Right. Like an acrobatics check to stay. Oh, it doesn't matter. It's just within range. Okay, never mind. I'm nope. still going to do it because okay. it's just within range. I will cast Sanctuary on the horse. Um, because I don't want the rock taking away our horse and causing us all to... Okay. Um, paint that. All right. So basically, if the rock attacks the horse, he has to make a wisdom saving throw. Okay. Well, that's interesting because that's what the rock was going to do. Um, so, <laughs> uh, give me a second here. Let me pull this thing Hopefully up. The rocks aren't wise. Um, okay. It's got keen. Oh, that's just perception. It's got advantage on wisdom perception checks, but not wisdom saves. Um, okay, so it swoops down, and it is actually apparently going for the horse. Um, so it will need to make a DC what? Wisdom DC save. is fifteen. Now. Fifteen. Okay. Oh, geez, uh, got a twenty-one. Oh my god. <laughs> Jeez. Oh yeah, it rolled a seventeen and it has plus four. So uh, it makes a save. So it uh, actually does still get to do it. So it actually grabs the wagon, or excuse me, grabs the horse, picks it up, and lifts it along with the wagon off the bridge. That's what I was afraid of. <laughs> so um, you guys in the wagon or in the cart, excuse me, you guys are all like thrown about and slam against the doors and um you you're not really dam you don't take any damage but uh van richten and euclidus will need to make ac acrobatics checks 
to keep your footing, not to not be thrown off this bench that you've been sitting on. Oh, I'm not good at that too. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Um, okay. Yep, you made it. It was only a DC 10 to stay on. Uh, you're able to basically, it, the bench is pretty wide, so you're able to just basically kind of grab on and hold on for dear life. And Van Richten's doing the same thing, and he's shouting out, Drusilla, no! Um, so at this point, the wagon is actually off the bridge, and now it's dangling over the river below. I mean, it's basically a 1,000 feet drop below the wagon. Great. And awesome. at this point, let's see. I'm going to actually make – there's a percentage chance that those doors on the back – you guys right. kind of landed on them – are going to open. So I'm going to say there's a 25% chance. 63. Okay, they are still held. Uh, what do you guys in the wagon wish to do? Scream, holy uh, fuck, what's happening? <laughs> <laughs> to find, right? yeah. find something to hold on to um the fuck <laughs> yeah. uh, okay there's plenty of stuff in the wagon you could you know hold on to but uh, if you want to kind of hold yourself aloft off the floor uh, you're going to need to make a strength athletics check each round I'm going to try to make sure the tiger doesn't go batshit yeah the tiger is just yeah it already is but it's not attacking you guys it's just uh, it doesn't know what to do. It, it really, I mean, it's got heavy armor on, so it is just basically on the on the floor, and obviously it didn't know to grab onto anything. But it's, So is, is it night, day, what time of day is it? It would be actually probably, it, it's approaching dusk. It's not yet dark out, but it's starting to get dark. So if you think about it being kind of wintry-like, it'd be probably like 4 o'clock, so it's starting to get dark. So I'm, I'm thinking, all right, so you said there are bars on the wagon. The rock is really big, yep. slapping its wings. Could I use my, my way of the shadow steppy thing to teleport onto his wing? Is it dim light that you can do it in, or how does I, yeah, it says uh, in dim light or in darkness? Okay, I would classify the twi you know approaching twilight as dim enough light. Um, the trick though is basically you're on this wagon that's dangling down below this rock, yeah. and it, it, it is swaying from side to side. So there's a possible chance that you'd be able to look out and see this rock. I mean, you you pretty much can piece together what happened. You heard the rock. The, suddenly yeah. the wagon got picked up. So you kind of have the idea, okay, we're being carried by this bird. I guess my deal is that I want to use, I want to use my monkey goodness um, to A, teleport, and then B, using my fancy new running thing that I have, I can run up the side and whatever. I can move around the stupid bird without falling off because I'm constantly moving around it. Okay. That, okay. That's that's my thought process here. All right. Um so, okay, if you want to time this right, uh, you can wait for the swing to come back, and we'll say even it's this time. Okay. So, yeah, you're able to actually look out the window, and the, the swing happens to be just right that you're able to see up. You see the bird. Um, and it would be, I'm trying to think, the wagon's probably about 10 feet. Horse is another, say, 10 feet to 20. So we're about tw it's about 20 feet up, tw maybe 30 feet up for the body of the rock. Yeah, at 60 feet of... 60 feet that I can do it. Okay, so. no problem. You could teleport pretty much anywhere on its body. All right, well, I will uh, teleport um, on its back. And since it's swinging around, uh, let me do that first. And let's just see what happens. Okay. <laughs> All right, so you teleport onto the back of this rock, and you've got your kind of spidey clinging ability, so you're not, like, losing your balance automatically. So you're on the back of this rock, and it's kind of like, oh, what the fuck? <laughs> it it kind of senses that you're there. You see its head kind of craning around, but you're kind of right behind it in its blind spot, so it can't see you. It just knows, just based on the pressure of your legs, that something's on its back, but it, it can't do anything really to get you. Okay, so um, where are we headed? Can I even, even figure out? Um, you really, it, it's snowing hard enough that you really can't make out the landscape. You can tell that. The, the river is kind of receding now 
it's kind of flying along the river. So it's the, the bridge that you are on is receding behind you and you can still see it. It's maybe 150 feet back. Uh, but the bird appears to be going, and you'll recall this is kind of the similar direction to it went before, uh, right. p- probably towards one of the mountain peaks where it presumably has a nest. Well, I scream down to Quietus, holy shit, what the hell did you guys do? <laughs> and a, We went riding during rock eating time. All right, so Clytus and uh, Van Richten, uh, now you don't need to make dex checks now. Uh, make a strength athletics checks to maintain your hold on this bench that you've got. I'm better at that. All right, that's... He doesn't have any... Oh, he lucked out there. He's got a minus one to his strength. But he's still got an 11, so... Yep, no problem. Uh, Okay, so you guys are hanging on for dear life, and uh, what about you guys in the wagon? What are you doing? Um... I guess I'm prepared if something were to happen where we start falling. Uh, I've got a polymorph spell prepared to cast on uh, Rowan and myself. <laughs> okay. All right. So, because I can't really rock? see anyone else. Yeah. I, just, I know what I want to do now. Could you polymorph into a lady up. rock and then Hold like, on. tempt it? Um, all right, I'm going to check something in there. The, uh, the tiger is very heavy and armored and is sitting on these doors. It's another chance for it to break. Yeah. Okay. 41. Nope. Okay, it's still holding. You can hear, feel this thing creaking. Uh, okay, Paul, so you said you had to do something? Yeah, I do. So what I want to do is I'm going to get uh, near its head, and I'm going to cast uh, Darkness spend two key points to cast darkness on a coin so that the darkness sphere is around me and its head so it can't see where it's going. Okay. All right. So you do that. Um, it's not like an eagle or an owl where it can turn its head completely around and bite you or anything, so it doesn't get an attack. Um, so you cast darkness. Uh, you hear it let off a squawk of surprise. And let's see. Would it drop the horse? In surprise. Well, that's uh, not what I want to do. I want to glide down. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, it apparently, you know, it hung onto the horse. But um, you can see now it's actually you're in you're in magical darkness too. So yeah, well, I don't know what the hell's going on. Yeah, you don't know what's going on, but uh, you feel it kind of now it's starting to like rock back and forth, like it's trying to dislodge you. Uh, you've got your sticky feet. So you aren't dislodged. Oh, okay, so it's, it's not like I got spider climb on. So if he's like going to f- flip over or something, I would have to move and stay. I would have to stay moving to keep my my ability going. Okay. Well, I'm assuming that you can kind of keep pacing and you know shifting yeah. your feet and essentially keep moving without actually <clears throat> traveling, yeah. so to speak. Okay. Uh, enough for you to be, to get stick. Assuming it works like spider climb when when you're moving. It. Okay. I, I, yeah, I would assume so. Yeah. Okay. Uh, anyway. And you guys on the wagon, um, or in, it's the uh, Clytus, you and Van Richten, you can see this. You basically see this black globe appear where the rock's head was, and it's actually shaking all over the place. And you guys can see that it's, uh, it looks like it, it might want to let go of the horse if, it, if this continues. Oh, shit. There's not a lot I can do, unfortunately. And you guys in the wagon can also sense that something obviously has agitated the rock. How high up are we? Uh, you can't really tell. <laughs> you, okay. you can guess that you're probably a thousand feet up or thereabouts. Jesus Christ. Oh, I forgot uh, Van Richten, since he's within 10 feet of me, gets a plus three on his saving throws. So oh, okay. All right. So, so Paul, what I, my goal was to get the rock to this end. Well, we're all within 10 feet of you, aren't we? Yeah, that's true. Well, except for maybe, I guess Paul would be in 10 feet. Paul, well, I know that Adrian it's not, not working. Yeah, you would know that's not working. Then I would drop it. Yeah, you don't get a sense of it descending. It's more of like the bird is just agitated. and. Fine, I'll drop it. But it doesn't look like it wants to give up its free meal because it hasn't taken any damage or anything like that. So um, it's just confused. Okay. And it doesn't... Well, then 
I guess I'm going to wait. We still, so we're still a thousand feet up, right? Yep. Okay. All right. So uh, the rest of you guys in the wagon, um, are you doing anything? Um. Is there a way to see like out? Yeah, well, that's what I add uh, from the back, from like down to the ground. You mean? Um, no, like, can I look forward to see what's going on? I don't know what you mean by look forward. What are you trying to see? The, there's a front of the wagon, and then there's the doors in the back of the wagon. Right, the front of the wagon is up. It, again, this wagon is swaying side to side even more so right. now that the rock was agitated. So, like, like okay. Adrian did, you could kind of time it and see as it sways up you could at least get somewhat of a glimpse up okay so i got some I got something else so if, if can't, what i think i could run i want to take my rope i think the door's going to open i want to run down <laughs> onto the onto the Whatever this thing is, uh, what do you call it? It says a wagon. It's a wagon. It's a well. It's a horse. It's basically you'd have to run down the talons of the ro the rock's talons to the horse, then down the bridle to the. <laughs> Actually, there's oh. also a, like some wooden, what do you call them things that are holding the stirrups, uh, but basically along those to the wagon itself, and then you'd be there. Huh. Well, I, oh, you said it's still dim on. I could just teleport in there, right? Yeah, if there's no limitation to. The, your power i can do it as a i guess what i want to do is i get rope if if you if i think that the the, the door is going to fall out the back um i'm tempted to use my rope to help tel teleport and then tie the door shut okay all right so you teleport to the back um uh rowan you after waiting a few seconds the wagon sways up enough that you can actually see up above and mm -hmm. basically see what's going on with the horse being carried by the rock. Oh, um, Van Richten and uh, Clytus make another athletics check. And do we have to in here? No, well, you guys are... Um, well, if you're hanging on to something suspended above the floor, then yeah, you would. I'm going to cast this <laughs> for them. For Clytus. What are you casting? Casting what? For what? He can add a D4. It's a touch this... spell. You can't touch Clytus. Oh, crap. Okay. You hear you hear a Wilhelm scream. <laughs> uh, yeah, so Clytus... Uh... Um, actually, because I see his role, I'm going to uh, use my bend lock. Uh, so I can, whenever another creature I see makes an attack roll, an ability check, or saving throw, okay. I can use a reaction to add a 1d4. Oh, go for it. So I can see him where we are, you said? Yeah. Well, the DC's 10, so that would automatically... Yeah, you don't even need to roll. Yeah. So Okay, so that would do it. Uh, does that uh, trigger a wild surge? Uh, well, it's just a bend luck ability, so it's not a spell, so I'd assume not. Okay, okay, cool. Thank you for not... Let me die. <laughs> All right, so Clytus almost lets go, and then almost like you see him almost slip, and at the last second, his like fingernails grab onto this board, and he wrenches himself back onto it and wraps his legs around it, shuddering. <laughs> Come on, Clytus. <laughs> okay, Rowan, were you uh, so you see what's going on? Um, what were you going, or was that what you were going to do? Yeah, that's what I was going to do. I was going to try to, you know, help him with his with his rolls, but I can't. That's what I was asking, is if there were, like, like a hole with some bars in the front, you know? But to try to, like, reach out. Oh, and... right. Yeah, you, unfortunately, you have no way to physically touch him at the moment. Okay, all right. Not, in the, not from the inside of the wagon. Uh, if Were you guys holding on to something supporting yourselves, or were you standing on the floor? Uh, I'm well, trying to I stand at. somewhere that's not the doors, at least. Right, yeah. Okay, so you're more bracing yourself against right. like cabinets the, or whatever. I, I imagine shelves. if we kind of brace against like one of the sides of the walls or whatever, uh, then we wouldn't be on the door. Cause I, and let, is the door the entire back of the wagon? Or yeah, pretty much. I mean, and there's yeah. there's like hinges on the side. I mean, there's a little bit of border, but it's mostly these two big doors that would open outward. Uh, but the tiger, again, all I don't know how many hundreds of pounds it weighs with its 
full plate armor. <laughs> it is definitely on there, and I need to make another check for that to see if it's going to hold. Um, Adrin, by the way, you have reached this area uh, just at this point. Okay, 80-something, so it doesn't burst. But you see this the doors are kind of like, you can see that they're straining. And see, So what I want to do is I want to create like a sling from one side with bars to the other side with the bars and have the rope basically be a sling around the door. Oh, okay. So kind of is bracing that, bracing it yep. shut. Yep. So that's what I want to try, attempt to do. Okay. Check or save or... Um, I'm trying to think what's rope use. Question. Is the the tiger kind of going ape shit or anything? Again, yeah. Well, it's it's kind of growling and yowling and. Sh All right. But it's. It, it, can I like basically, I don't know, use my animal handling to try to calm it? Sure. All right, I'm gonna try that. Um. Damn. All right. I would say just go ahead and make a dex check. Um, you, uh, Adrian, I'm sorry for your tying of the rope. Oh yeah. Oh, you tie such a beautiful knot that it's never coming out. Um, Sweet. the uh, you're not really able to calm down the beast. It doesn't snap yeah. at you or anything like that. All but right. um, I'm it's gonna try again. Maybe I slipped or something. Okay. Well, before that, um, before that, we'll do another round of checks here. You can see. Yep. Uh, the ground or the ground is now kind of lost in the snow, so you're you can feel like you're going up a little bit. Um, oh shit! Uh, Van Richten lost his grip. Oh god. <laughs> okay, so can I try to grab him? Uh, well, you got to try and make your athletics check first. Uh, let's see. Hopefully, I'll do better than last time. Oh, there nice. Okay. Um, you can try and make a flailing grab for him. This would be, um, I would just say, make a dexterity check. That would be a save. Oh, wow. Uh, okay. Well, it was it was technically a check, not a save, but I will give you that natural oh. 20 roll. So, so, well, it would have been the same plus, I think. Yeah, no, well, we'll just, yeah. I don't want you to lose that natural 20 because that's nice. So, <laughs> so yeah, you are now, you basically... I'm going to say that you are holding on to the bench with your legs and you reached out and grabbed Van Richten. <laughs> so you're like dangling aloft. Van Richten's like going, oh, don't let go. Don't let go. Uh, Paul, you happen to see this while you're tying off the second rope. All right. Well, if, if the door is secure, I'm going to run up and try and put Van Richten back in his seat. Okay. <laughs> All right, so you're going to try and uh, – I would say if you go ahead and make an athletics check, uh, I'd let you do that. Athletics. Ooh, I don't – I'm not And Ke Clytus, if you wish, you can aid him to give him advantage. Um, how, what do I just make a regular athletics check? Sure. Yeah. Another <laughs> natural. <laughs> wow. Okay. Uh, <laughs> all right, well, I'm going to say that with your athletics check, natural 20 on that i'm gonna say you're actually able to heave him all by yourself up towards the i guess towards the uh banister thing and i'll i'll let van richten make a check to see if he can grab it uh well no he didn't okay <laughs> he's got that negative one uh but anyway if you want to try, try and make another champ you guys can try it again okay I can try and assist you. Yeah, that... that would might work out better. All right, Clytus has got the seventeen. Okay, there we go. All right, so combined, you guys managed to haul him back up onto the wagon. Um, so, or I should say, back onto the bench, which you now both of you guys are still hanging onto it. Clytus, you're able to grab it again. Um, another check for the door. <laughs> Did the uh, rope help, I'm guess I'm hoping? As far as you can tell, as long as the rope does not snap, it should hold that door shut. Um, Yay. It does still not break. Uh, basically, I've reduced the chance of it bursting. And, okay. 
Um, so Are it is still set. The ground yet? Uh, you you don't see the ground below you. It's swirling snow, but you do see kind of the looming shadow of what looks to be a mountain approaching. So wherever this rock is taking you, it's towards the mountain. Okay. Okay. So uh, my next, whenever our next chance to do something, I'm going to go back up, teleport back up on its back, so that when it lands, I'm going to open a can of whoop ass on its head. <laughs> Okay. Um, all right. So I'm I'm gonna say uh, I'll make one more check for the door before you get there. Um, Clytus and Van Richten each make one more check, and then we'll say the bird is gonna drop the wagon um, somewhere. Shit. Oh well. Maybe not. Shit. I don't know. Oh boy. <laughs> uh, hang on. I have to roll a percentile dice here. It. Twenty-seven. Okay. It, the door almost snapped through the rope, but it did not. Um, Van Richten. All right, he's able to hold. Oh, nice one. Uh, now he rolls a 19. Um, <laughs> Clytus. All right, let's see. Are we ever getting down off this stupid thing? This is like <laughs> the last check before the bird uh, descends. So is this athletic? So we're. Yeah. You're what? holding onto the bench. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. Uh, I guess I'm gonna try to give you a D4. Well, let's see. Van Richten will try to grab you this oh. time to return the favor. Um, dexterity yeah, check. Yeah, not like. <laughs> well, he's better. He's more dexterous than he is strong. Um... You gave him a D. You gave him a four. So... Oh, okay. You're giving him a plus four. Yeah. So he does. He doesn't fall anyway. Well, the four. So oh, okay. Then doesn't have to. Oh, okay. All right. So you give him another. Okay, another luck thing. All right. So you manage to keep your hold. Van Richten manages to keep his hold, and you see now this mountainside looming before you. Uh, this timber line of these really tall, what you presume to be really tall um, fir trees and everything, and you can see now uh, the rock swoops towards this large what looks like basically a, a huge deadfall, but it's basically its nest, um, which is on this kind of escarpment of rock um, on the side of this mountain. And it basically gets about 20 feet over the top, and it just lets the horse drop. Um, so you guys drop 20 feet, and basically I'm going to say you take – If I'll let you say if you make a saving uh, – excuse me uh, – what would it be? Uh, yeah, well, a deck save. Uh, Paul takes nothing, right? No, Paul doesn't. Yeah, he's still on the rock's back. <laughs> well, he's allowed. Soon, Even if he falls, he just horse, doesn't take damage. As soon as that horse drops, I attack. Okay. Well, let me resolve what happens with you everyone said first. Deck save? Yeah, a deck save, basically to avoid. All right. Wow. So, nice. Okay, and. Uh, <laughs> Van Richten made his... Oh, I, for, I completely forgot about Casimir, too. He's in there. <laughs> mm. uh, and he made his. Okay, so you guys are each only going to take um, 1d6. Uh, of course, I rolled a 6. So 6 points of damage. All right, whatever. It's better than dying. Yeah, well, it was versus 2d10. He's <laughs> dropping 1,000 feet from a cliff. Right. Yeah, that's oh, wow. what I mean. <laughs> Casimir's still... He's still fairly wounded. I took Didn't a little damage. Rest with us? What's that? Before we left, we all took a rest. Yeah, like, that's did. true. Nice. Yeah, and you didn't get into combat, so he would be okay. He'd be close. Yeah, he to should him. be at full. Okay. Unless he just didn't rest with us. <laughs> yeah, I refuse to rest. <laughs> I took more damage from that damn banister. <laughs> all right, so um, the horse actually. Let's see. Oh, the horse made it saves. It might still be alive. Uh, hang on, I gotta look this up. How many hit points does a horse have? I can heal it. Oh, you guys, where's, where are we gonna go? We're on the side of a freaking mountain. <laughs> where, where, where's the horse of the wagon gonna go? <laughs> oh, wow, it's got okay, down yeah. Down the mountain. <laughs> yeah, down. Uh, yeah, so he's the uh, Drusilla, Drusilla's still alive, uh, but definitely wounded. Uh, and Ooh. whoa. These are attacks on the rock. Okay. On the rock, yep. 
Alright, hang on, I've got a Jesus Christ. It's not undead, is it? <laughs> it is not undead. Okay, just checking. That's yeah. how big the oh, rock is. Holy shit. I just have it there to keep track of its hit points. Look, I'm next to the rock. <laughs> That's a big freaking bird, dude. You might not be able to see me, but I'm there. <laughs> it's like something out of the Pink Floyd animation from the wall, where it just swoops over the whole... Um, so let's see. Wow. 20, 30, 36 points? 36 points. Okay, you wounded a little bit. I, I figure. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> what, what I do is I piss it off. All right, yeah. Now it now it wheels around and turns to face you guys. And um, if you guys look to the right of the map, uh, you you see you have your tokens there. So if you want yeah. to select yourselves, um, I'm going to pull up the initiative tracker now so we can have some sort of a manage. Oh, okay. Can you put me in front of the rock so I can see myself when I'm when I'm on top of him? <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> where are you? Are you below it? Yeah, where are we? I'm, I can see myself. We're off to the right. Yeah, you're it. to the right, right of it. Oh, there we are. Okay. Yeah, you still I mean, don't see me? We're not doing yeah, positional wait. combat. We're not doing positional combat. I'm oh. just. I was just looking to click on myself to get the initiative. Well, I'm yeah. Go on this <laughs> no, just keep so it. No, no, no. Just put, it. put your guys back. No, put your guys back where you were. <laughs> In fact, I'm going to hide this guy. So, no, and then he goes out of initiative. Hang on. I only put him on the screen because I wanted him to be in the initiative. I wanted to show how big he was. He's not that big. No. Uh, well, he, feels like... <clears throat> he feels that big when we see him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's to scale with your guys' counters, roughly. It's, right. It's like five foot square areas. Uh, okay, so let Jesus. me get back in the. You mean he's not bigger than Castle Ravenlaw? <laughs> yeah. He is bigger than the entire Mount Gacchus. Um All right, so Mr. Rock, what is your... I bet she's really easy to hit then. Dirty here. Oh, that's the tiger. You couldn't hit the broad side of a rock. <laughs> I must have closed his thing. Here, hang on. There it is. Okay, so, yeah, he's just straight up Dex. And I always forget Casimir. Don't forget the new guy. Yep. I've got to add him actually here. Somebody worse than me. Go. I think. Go, oh, Casimir. Under Octavio. There we go. Oh, that's weird. Why did I do that? Why doesn't it show his name? Rectavio. And the hell is his initiative? Thirteen. Okay. Okay, that's everybody. Let me sort. Okay, so we're at the top of the order. Looks like Jugs gets to go. You are... Okay, so when this uh, wagon landed, uh, the back doors did not, in fact, burst open. Uh, so you are inside this wagon. Well, Which is kind nice. of on its... Actually, I would say it's on its side. <laughs> Probably stuck in here until somebody undoes that rope outside. Well, you don't know that. Well, yeah, I was going to say, I imagine when we were put in here, well, there's a way to... Uh, you would actually this. have seen um, the rope. You would have actually have seen Adrian tying rope around the bars right. on either side. So you kind of get the idea that he might have... Right. You might have inferred could, that. Well, so opening a door isn't an action. So could I just try to open the door and see what happens? Um, Yeah, you could try that as a swift action and it would fail. Okay. Well, the door would like... Does it like partially open, or does it just hit like a? It, you can tell rope that it's right away. being blocked like I can by tell the rope. The rope is holding it. Yes. It's just hemp rope. Yeah. Off. I know. Is so through the uh, 
the bars, can I see the Vrock? Um, well, one side of the wagon's on the ground, and the other one's pointing straight up, because the wagon's on its side. So, so, yeah, there's bars on each side, so the side pointing up, can I see him? Not from your angle, no. It's just looking up oh. into the snowy sky. Okay. How wide is, like, if I... If I'm standing on the side that's on the ground, like, how wide is the wagon? Am I able to stand upright, even? Yeah. Yeah, I would say that it's about at least eight feet wide. Okay. Maybe you have to crouch a little bit from if from all the crap that's on the side of the wagon, but... Yeah, probably, because I'm pretty tall as well. I'm six foot four, so... Um, I guess I'm just going to try to kick open the door okay go ahead and make an athletics check oh let's see yeah i would say that'd be enough to snap the rope 19 so you're able to kick and pow the rope snaps doors fly open all right now if i walk outside can i see the rock uh, yeah, you see this ro- enormous bird turning around to face Adrin. And how far away is he? Well, oh, you're still on. So he's still on his back. But oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I thought you jumped off. Okay, so I'm sorry. Then it's it's now kind of yeah flailing, flailing about <laughs> trying to attack him. How far away from me is he? Uh, I would say that he's probably thirty feet away from you. This whole ledge is probably a hundred foot round, roughly. Okay, then I will use sorcery points to cast Cone of Cold okay. as a bonus action. Uh, you would catch Adrin in that. You bet. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's a constitution saving throw, so uh, I don't know. Okay. I don't care. <laughs> You're fine. It'll be okay. Oh, yeah, that rock, boy, it has a horrible constitution, plus nine. Oh, Jesus. Uh, well, it actually, it only rolled a four, so 13? What's the DC we're looking for? 16. 16. Okay, it actually failed. <laughs> wow. Uh, oh, and so did that. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's okay. Wow. It's not immune or res- uh, resistant to cold in any way, so it takes that's a... That's a terrible roll. 21 cold damage. Okay. 32 is average on that roll. Yeah, that wasn't very good. (laughs) Wow. But you do it some damage. All right, so now, Clytus. All right, can I reach the rock? Um, Can I one up and smack it? You're closer to the front, so you're probably about 20 feet away. All right, then I can go up and smack it. Sure. go up and smack it. Definitely hits. Those both hits? Yep, it's got an AC of 15. That's pretty big. Oh. Um, do I want to do more than that? I Third. feel like we should. I should save some stuff. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit it with normal hits. Okay. So 32. Is that right? 31. 31. Oh, math hard. <laughs> Okay, so you whack it a few times with its axe. That definitely got its attention now. Um, while it's still irritated by this little jumping beanie on its back, uh, he's going to focus now on the nasty dwarf with the big knife or sword axe thing. Choppy thing. He doesn't like choppy things, so he's going to multi-attack the dwarf. Even though you're not much more than a morsel, he doesn't like biting morsels. So he will first do... Uh, two attacks, one with his beak, one with his talent. So the beak attack, wow, plus 13. Uh, yeah, it hits. <laughs> uh, yeah, 27 likely hits. Yeah, you think? <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm just going to roll this here. And then... What? It's plus? Yeah, holy crap. 24 points of damage from the beak, piercing damage. Oh, is that all? Yeah, that's it. Uh, and with its talons, uh, 16. Actually, it rolled really bad. Oh, so those missed. Yep. Its bite was pretty bad. Yeah. 
Uh, and it's going to remain where it is because it doesn't want to abandon its meal quite yet. Uh, Rictavio, he will... <clears throat> um, ba -da -bum -bum. Hang on, I gotta quickly look at his spells here. Yeah, that's not gonna help much. That sanctuary doesn't help against attacks. Jesus, none of this will help, really. It's not evil. Okay, so his spells aren't going to do much good. So he is going to... Uh, he has a sword cane. He pulls out his sword cane, and he runs up to the rock. And... Hmm. 19 hits. Oh, my God, for two points damage. Uh... Uh, even more than that hits. That's better. Take this. Yeah. Pew, pew. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he's not doing a huge amount of damage with his sword cane, but uh, he's trying to help anyway. Uh, Rowan, you're up. I'd be no better attacking with a sword, so it's okay. <laughs> Rowan? Davey there. Can't hear you. I forget, forgot I was muted. Oh. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm going to exit the uh, wagon and find the thing in my sight and s scorching ray it. Okay, yeah, you can easily, you can stay pretty much behind the wagon if you want to and yeah. shoot it. Uh, that definitely so, hits it. All right. That one did. And that one probably missed. Uh, yes, 11 misses. Okay. So. Yeah. What? Wow. Nine. 2d6 and I get a three. Really? <laughs> well, the, at least the six was average for what it's worth. Not really. Well, 2d6. Excuse me. On average, you get two threes, right? Adrin, you're still on this thing's back. Okay, I'm going to attack it four times. Jeez. All hit. Wow. 27, 37, 44. <clears throat> okay, you're starting to whittle this thing away. It's still up, though. Oh, boy. Casimir. Um... Well, he, well, he could do it, but he would get you as well. If you're shouting I'm fireball. Shouting, I'm shouting fireball. <laughs> okay, I'm well, fireball. yeah, he can have it go against the mountain and miss the rest of you guys so you're not uh, engulfed in it, but he will, in fact, do that. No oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to use my inspiration. <laughs> there you go oh, fireball man. fireball oh shit <laughs> <laughs> all right so let's unless see unless the dc is less than thir 13 or less it's probably not going to be <laughs> uh the fireball let's see his dc is what hang on so that would hit me as well would it not no he was oh. putting it so that it, oh, you guys okay. wouldn't get hit uh blah blah what the hell why don't i ever have his uh i think his dc is 16 okay Yep. Uh, okay, so, but it takes the full 31 points and squawks in rage. Uh, with, there's a great big boom. Ooh, let's see if there's an avalanche triggered by this fireball going off. <laughs> oh, you hear some rumbling, but it looks like it went down the side uh, adjacent to you, so you're not caught in it. Uh, he's like, oh, maybe that wasn't a good idea. Jugs, you're up. Um, I also want to cast a fireball. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
you guess there's a 25% chance an avalanche would be triggered. Screw it. <laughs> <laughs> the wild mage speaketh. <laughs> uh, I also have uh, a new ability that I gained Ooh. with leveling up. I can use a sorcery point and choose a number of creatures up to my charisma modifier, and chosen creatures automatically succeed on a saving throw. Oh. So I'm going to do that, and I'm going to make Adrian automatically succeed and only hit him and the Brock. Oh, okay. All right, so Adrian will take... So 27. Okay, so Adrian will take half damage, the Rock. Well, he'll take nothing. Oh, yeah, that's right. If he succeeds, yeah. yeah. Have evasion. Yep, okay, so you actually manage... I don't know how that actually works in terms of you being on the back of this Rock, which is right in the middle of a fireball, but... <laughs> Uh, you dodged the flame somehow. Uh, the rock actually rolled pretty well for a deck save of 17, so uh, it'll take half of that. So All right. 13 points of fire damage more. It's still up. Smoking. Oh, let's see if there's an avalanche. Oh, shit! 25% <laughs> chance I rolled a 13. <laughs> Okay, so now you hear this rumbling, a much more rumbling, and this time you guys see snow descending. Well, you yeah. actually don't see it yet, but you see the you chunks. Yeah, you hear it. <laughs> uh, you guess that it will arrive in, uh, let's see here. Let's roll D4. Uh, well, you don't know when it's going to arrive, but within maximum the several DM rounds. Knows. Yes, the DM knows. <laughs> Uh, all right, so, Clytus. <laughs> Fireball, that's a bad idea. Yeah, I know, it's a great idea. Kaboom. That's all right. I have I'm going to up. I'm an eight intelligence wild magic <laughs> sorcerer. I feel like it would. it's right up my alley. You are living up to character. I'm just going to keep hitting this damn thing. Oh, okay. The second one actually misses, but the first one hits. Okay. Uh, I'll take it. Still up. And it's now the rock's turn. Uh, yeah, again, he can't get at... He doesn't like all these explosions and everything. Um, so, oh, what would he do? Would he stick around? And there's rumbling. Hmm. It's intelligence is three. <laughs> I'm going to go with he would stick around. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's hungry, and he really doesn't like you and these big explosions going off. It's just kind of in a frenzy now, so I'm going to say it's just going to keep attacking Clytus. All right. Uh, so another beak. Oh, crap. 18? No. All right. Yay. Well, that's a good thing. Yeah, that's a good thing. I shouldn't be, shouldn't be saying crap when the beak doesn't tear <laughs> into you. Uh, Talons, um, that's a better roll. Uh yeah, 27 again to hit. Okay. Say no, Tim. Say no, that doesn't. <laughs> uh, nope, his DC is 28. <laughs> my DC is 20, unfortunately. My AC is 20. 14 points from a Talon. Oh, um, <laughs> does uh, 14 uh, points slashing damage, and the target is grappled. <laughs> <laughs> sure, why not? <laughs> Okay, so you've got an avalanche approaching. You are grappled by this rock. Well, maybe he'll fly away, and I'll. <laughs> now you get. Now you want him to fly away. <laughs> Rectavio. Oh boy, yeah, the saber isn't going to do much good there. Um. Oh, he he casts um freedom of movement on you. Oh. I, interesting. Oh yeah, I forgot the tiger. Uh, how the tiger go on the same round? Um, blah, 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 blah. Where is my saber toothed armored tiger? Tigers Here. eat birds. That's right. Uh, what does he do? Um, okay, so he, he was getting his bearings after being dropped on the ground. Uh, so he was still 20 feet away. I'm gonna have him pounce. Pounce. He's gonna yeah. run 20 feet towards the creature, and he actually jumps up on the tiger and uh, makes a claw attack at it. There we go. 20. That hits. Not natural, but um, 
Okay, so the target must succeed a DC 14 strength saving throw or be knocked pro. <laughs> How does this little tight? Wait a minute. There's How does... no way a little tiger is going to knock a Brock prone. <laughs> there mu- okay, it doesn't say anything about size restriction, but I'm uh, sorry. Okay. It's not going to. Yeah. I'm sorry. This little uh, tiger isn't going to knock this big rock pro. And I'm that sorry. Okay. Um, that seems unlikely. Okay. So yeah, I'll, I'll let him get an extra attack though. We'll say that. Let's say, let's say the claw latches into him and lets him bite him too. Uh, first, let me roll damage for this claw. Another. So another 11 points from a claw in the bite. Nice. 19. Plus six. Yeah, 25. Another bite hits. Uh, 1d10 plus five piercing. Uh, another 12 points from the bite. Wow, yeah. Tiger's just ripping into this thing. Okay, Rowan's up. You hear an avalanche approaching. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to try to... That hits. Yes. Why, why didn't it... Let me do a higher level cast. Does that know. one not have the ability to be cast higher level? It says oh. so in, in here. Huh. I tried clicking on it. it didn't. Because I get like one additional d6. Did you wish to do it as a higher yeah, level? Yeah, like, like a third well, level. Instead okay, of well, just first. do it. Just do it right. and then cast yeah, right. roll more dice. Yeah. Well, Click the uh, damage. Uh, Maybe yeah, it'll be rolled into the that's damage. Where it was. Yeah. So okay, that corrected it. Yep. Oh! Oh, you only got two on the higher level. That's okay. So sixteen <laughs> points. Wow. Okay, this rock is on its last talon, but it is still alive. Oh well. Not okay. <laughs> not not so much now. <laughs> I'm going to go with no. <laughs> it's like that line from uh, Groundhog Day. It could still be alive. Oh, probably not now. <laughs> it had three hit points left. Okay, you basically <laughs> snap the rocks back, and its wings fly up. Uh, Clytus, you're able with your freedom of movement to roll out of the way without getting crushed by this giant rock. And I scream, hide under the dead body! Hide under the dead body! <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Wait, uh, like Casimir says, are you freaking insane? There's a giant avalanche coming. Where are you going to go, dude? <laughs> I have burning hands. I can melt the stone. <laughs> I think we should I cut don't... open its belly. We got a tiger to dig us out again. <laughs> yeah, we know the tiger's gotta... good at digging. I'm going to hit the restroom. Okay, well, Casimir is going to, uh, let's see. Oh, not launch the wrong application. Casimir is going to. <clears throat> oh boy. Um. Shit. <laughs> yes, Liam in secure shelter. He does not have that spell. Does he have stop the stop avalanche spell? No, he does have ice storm, which would really help. In this yeah, circumstance, yeah. oh yeah, bring <laughs> more the, uh, ice upon us. Teleport. Uh, well, he's got uh, Misty Step, so he might be able to get out of a buried avalanche. So he actually, actually, he thinks you're right, and <laughs> he doesn't actually argue. He he thinks that's actually probably a good move because he can get out. So he's he'll be able to see it too. He can't what? just. He's got a, a Misty Step. You have to be able to see where you're going. Oh, yeah. is that? Oh yeah, that's. That, I was thinking dimension door where you don't have to see it. Yeah, you have to. It's an unoccupied space that you can see. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. So anyway, yeah, he's gonna go underneath there for now because he can't think of any. He has no other way to get anywhere. So. Uh shite. Jugs. Um, the avalanche has not yet arrived, but it's closer. Who wants to survive with me? Come with okay. me if you want to live. <laughs> I can polymorph myself and someone else into something that flies. <laughs> Could you polymorph yourself into a rock and pick us all up and pick up the uh, wagon? Could we all dive into the wagon, you turn into a rock and fly us away? No. Mm. 
Varrock, I don't think, is a beast, is it? No. Uh, yeah. No. How about a gigantic bird of some sort? I can do a giant eagle, but uh, it's not I don't think that I can carry that no. much. You know, I'm guessing, like, um, the, the, the massive gorilla, which is, what, 20 foot square, we could dig us out with a polymorph. T-Rex, I don't know. Yeah. T-Rex would have a challenge, probably, because it could really but only... The, but the gorilla would just it's be... got able... tiny arms. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get That's you guys out! <laughs> the gorilla would be able to do it, though. Gorilla would probably make Fairly short work of digging out an avalanche. Yeah. Okay. Well, do you want to dive under, and I can polymorph us after? Sure. All right. All right. Um, so you dive under the rock, Clytus. Sure. Okay. I said we pull an Empire Strikes Back. We cut open its belly. We all get in, and then we <laughs> yeah. ride it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's what we're doing. Okay. Uh, Rick Tavio. Um. Boy, he does anything. Well, uh, he can speak with dead, so after you guys die, he can talk to you <laughs> and ask you, what the hell were you thinking? <laughs> uh, <clears throat> I was thinking I can't outrun an avalanche, so where are we going to go? That's my yeah, question. you're on a loft. Oh, God. All right, yeah, he has his tiger burrow under there with you. Uh, Rowan? Um, I'll do the same. Okay. Adrin? No, you were there already. Sure. Okay, so you guys going to wait out for the... Yep. All right, so you guys all huddle under the body of this rock. And one round later, boom, this enormous roar fills the world, and you feel the whole ground shaking, and uh, you can't hear yourself scream just from the thunder of this. Uh, you are definitely pummeled and bru bruised and battered, but the rock is big enough that it's not dislodged from the mountainside. Uh, you just take 3d6 bludgeoning damage to this thing. Seven points damage, no big deal. Oh, yeah, that's not much. Uh, and after probably about a minute and a half, uh, it gradually subsides. Uh, a fast moving and big avalanche so uh after a little bit it gradually dies down and you guys are now <clears throat> trapped and you can tell that uh you're gonna run out of air pretty quickly under here yeah i'm, I'm gonna turn uh adrin and myself into giant gorillas okay so you guys turn into gorillas and uh Rictavio has um, or giant apes or whatever it's called. Giant know. ape. Is that okay. a spell or an ability? It's a polymorph. Ability. That's a spell. That's a spell. spell. Oh, so does that trigger that wild surge thing? He didn't do anything to. Oh, okay. Yeah. I have to use my tides of chaos to yeah. trigger it. Oh. The tiger is gonna more? help you guys dig. Um. Casimir is he's going to start um, he doesn't have he's not going to do a fireball uh, <laughs> but he <laughs> he is I, I thought he had flame one of the, what's the one with the scorching ray I thought that might help but he doesn't have that spell uh, he'll, he'll do fire bolts on there to try and dislodge and melt some of the snow to help you guys yeah. dig out uh, I, I have, uh, let me see what this cantrip is. <clears throat> uh, that's like, do you, do you think this would work or not, Paul? Let me just throw it in the thing. It says flame like radiance. Um, so you're going to damage whatever target. Yeah, which is the snow. Click on the um, damage site. It says a creature. It's radiant damage. Two. Yeah. Um, yeah, if it's radiant, then that It's radiant. I mean, it's like yeah. holy damage. It's not really I, like right. fire yeah, damage. So like, oh. I do have burning hands, so... I burning mean, hands is, would definitely work. That is flame, so... Yeah. 
I'll Burning hands that. would definitely help to. In fact, that would be better than the fire bolts that Casimir is. Yeah. Okay. I can do that then. You're basically, you turn into a flamethrower, like... Right. <laughs> All right, so the two giant apes, the saber-toothed tiger digging, and the various firebolt spells, uh, you guys manage to dig your way out before you suffocate under this uh, avalanche. It's actually about 30 feet of snow you were buried under. But, uh... How many rounds do you think that took? <clears throat> I mean, so I can, like, subtract spells? Oh, um... Well, how many did you want to cast? Did you want to keep casting it until you ran out? Yeah, until, like, why don't I do two? I mean, is that a fair number? Sure. I mean, it would have helped. Okay. I mean, I want to be fair about, you know, how I use them. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. If if you weren't planning to use them all up, then. Right. Um. So in any case, yes, you're able to escape the avalanche without suffocating to death. So you come out, um, basically pop your head out. Uh, you're on basically a, now a slope. There's no sign of the where you were in terms of the escarpment. Uh, no sign of the wagon. Um, Rictavio mourns the loss of Drusilla, who was also <laughs> swept down the mountainside, apparently, or buried elsewhere. But you're alive. On the side of a mountaintop. <laughs> well, let's see here. So these things are... Can you... Uh... Huge. They have, a climb, yeah. they have a climb rate. So we could probably get... I'd put somebody on my back and start climbing down, right? Yeah. Where's the... They could both do that. Yep. I mean, I don't know where to go. I'm guessing down would be good. Yeah. Um, or we could stay here and freeze a bit. <laughs> yeah, it's getting cold. You guys do have winter gear, but uh, you, you're going to need to get down somehow and eventually. Yeah. Um, Is that, that token for the party about where we are? or That was where you were. I didn't move it since. Right. You are basically... Well, it's hard for you to tell. Right now, it's actually getting very dark, and it's still snowing, so you're not actually sure where you are. The bridge was right here, but you were carried some distance away from that, back towards the mountain, Mount Gacchus. Okay. They say we just keep going down. A yeah. How long does it last? An hour? Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you two are going to carry somebody. Uh, yeah, I, we can do it for up to an hour, so... Um, hmm. I, I think we, as a huge creature, we probably carry two medium-sized creatures. Well, well I think it's you, just, you have a carrying capacity according to the handbook. Yeah, just walking on plain ground. Yeah, but you're talking about descending an unstable avalanche down the side of a mountain, which isn't just you know a flat slope either. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, your carrying capacity is your strength score multiplied by 15, and they have a 23 strength, so actually on regular ground you can carry quite a lot. <laughs> well, all right, so I'm going to say... I'm not going to belabor this whole thing with mechanics. Um, I would say you could do it, and the rest of you guys could follow... Or try to follow. I mean, some you can't carry everybody. Um, yeah, that's about 350 pounds, roughly, on solid ground. So we could probably, uh, while climbing down, carry a person mm -hmm. and their stuff. Uh, let's see. Uh, da -da -da -da. I would let basically I'm going to say if you guys want to make a bunch of a climbing athletics checks to see how how you do getting to the bottom. Those are terrible for me. So well, are you you're being carried? Probably. I am? Probably. I mean two yeah. people are. 
Whoever has the best athletic checks are walking. <laughs> yeah, probably. Uh, both Casimir and Rictavio have a minus one. Okay. I have a four. That's as good as the Tigers. I have a two, so. How many do we want me to roll? I did four. Yep, no problem. This is a fairly low. D Ooh. <laughs> Rowan, you were yeah, walking? Like, well, he, you're not. You're on some one of our backs, I think. Okay, alright. I don't know how many we were supposed to roll. I rolled four. Yeah, four would be appropriate, I'd say. Okay. Alright, I rolled Just four. Somehow I rolled an 11, so 11 was the worst on my last roll. Yeah, I'm sitting. Ooh, Cletus. <laughs> His last roll was also bad. <laughs> okay, so Cletus, you, uh, in the process of descending, I'm going to say you didn't fall off a cliff and die, uh, but you take um, seven more hit points of damage as you kind of slip, slide, and bounce off a few trees and rocks before catching yourself. Medivac had to pick you up. And... Yeah. Uh, the tiger made it down. Uh, Casimir, is he, is he being carried by one of you guys? Uh, he'd probably be the other one then. Or, well, who would be worse, Casimir or uh, the other guy? Van Richten, well, is, Van Richten. they're both minus one. Oh, my God. Uh, then I guess I'd carry Casimir, and we'll let Van Richten do his own thing. Okay, so he'll need to make. All right, so he fails once, taking another five points of damage. Just so you all know, I am like crazy hurt. And he fails again, taking so another <laughs> six. Well, uh, I have, uh, I took mass cure wounds. He failed again. So I can heal all of us later. Well, he yeah. can heal himself. Okay. In fact, and he can cure. In fact, he can do a cure wounds on you um, okay. right away. Yeah, I can too. Because I'm, I'm, I'm still at 60 something. So I'm, I'm pretty good. I'm at 59, so. Of what? 72. Okay. What are you at, uh, Clytus? Uh, I'm at 25 out of 76. Oh, wow. Yeah. All right. Um, you want to do a... He does... Uh, Rictavio does a fifth level cure light on you. For what? Uh, cure wounds, excuse me. So... 5d8 healing on you, Cletus. Oh, sorry. 25. You get 25 back. Thank you. Oh, My mouse died, so I'm trying to fix it. And I'll... Uh... So that puts you back up to 50? Yeah. Yep. That's not a bad place to be. So I'll do that as well. Not a fifth, but uh, I'll, do a, I'll do a fourth on you. So you get another 22. Hmm. So 72 you're at. Probably okay. doing pretty good now. <laughs> and then you need some too, um, Jugs? I I mean, I'm only no, at I'm 59 not. out of 72. I don't need any. I'm good. I don't know how uh, Paul Adrian's doing. Uh, I'll 40, just... 45 out of 72. Yeah, he needs it way more than I do. All right, so this this one's coming to you, Andrew. So take twenty five. Add it. Oh, I'll take that. So you guys get to the base of this mountain somewhere you're not sure where. Uh, you're completely lost at this point because it's right. still snowing, dark. It's um, nighttime now. Uh, you can tell that it's 
fairly wooded area, so you might be kind of maybe in this area here, but you're not okay. sure. Um, Can we yeah, find so... a clearing or something? And so we're still on the wrong side of the river, or yeah. Yeah, well, if the mountain that they it was, the rock was flying towards was this one. Should we make, like, a survival check or something to try to see if we had the right direction? Well, I, I thought... we should go somewhere. Are you staying? Are you going to rest, or are you going to continue moving on? If it's oh. night, I don't want to you know, travel at night. Uh, I guess if you want to rest first, that's fine. I, think we I mean, I just used camp. all my sorcery points. and. Well, what I, what I don't want to do is I don't want to travel at night and make it even worse right. for people. Oh, well. I mean, there's no, things no. I can heal up by resting, so I'm not going to necessarily say no, but... Yeah, let's rest. Let's make camp. Okay, yeah, the trees do give you at least a little bit of shelter from the snow. Um and you're able to find some dead wood. If you, do you want to light a fire, or are you going to just sit in the cold? Okay. Yeah, so you're able to cap, collect enough firewood to, to build a fire. Um, and, you... and I've got a tent, I know. <clears throat> Stuff like that. So we can set up camp. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, so what uh, will be your watch order for the night? Um, why don't you guys arrange yourselves in the order you'd like to be on the right? Oh, Pedalwick's not there anymore. Too bad. So hey. I, I will take my rope off my list. Oh, yeah, you've lost Well, that. you have really approximately two 25-feet rope now. <laughs> no, I didn't. No, I don't. It's buried in the Oh, that's true, way. yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot about that. I wasn't trying to rub it in. <laughs> no. I'll go last, so I can can. Uh... I'll go first, so I can. Yeah, because you like well, you like to do your morning lord yeah. shit. Right. Well, okay. I'll go, go first because then I get a full rest. I meditate. I do my elf thing. Or should I go first and then I can do it at at the end? Well, you should go last and do your morning. Yeah, you'll get eight hours of sleep and then do your morning. Casimir is going to do his okay. first because he needs to do prep his spells. He's a wizard. All right. Yeah. Okay. So Casimir first, then Clytus, then me, then Adrian, then Rowan. Something like that. So we'll uh, all be able to get eight hours of sleep. But yeah, Rictavia would be between yeah. Adrian and Rowan. Sure. I only need four, so I'm good. Okay. Oh, you only need four? I need eight. All right, so let's see how the night passes. Okay. Um, let's see. Jugs. During your watch... Um, Make a charisma saving throw. Oh, nice. Um, you... Actually, let me look this up quickly here. Oh, I'm sorry. Not a... I'll let you keep your roll. This was actually a wisdom saving throw, not a charisma. Oh, well. <clears throat> and if, if you're in 10 feet of me, you get plus three. Oh. Well, so if it's a wisdom, I only roll the six. Um, so. Actually, also, um, you have advantage on this roll for some reason. Uh, okay, so the better one was a 13, so a 13 plus my wisdom modifier of four, or no, three. All right, uh. So 16. so 16, and then I get three from Clytus as well. Yeah. So that's a 19. 19, okay. My better roll. Okay. Um, you... Um... You get the sensation of being... Like someone's trying to watch you. 
but failed. It's really weird. <laughs> um, you don't see right. anything or hear anything, but you get the sensation, like the very strong feeling that someone is thinking of you and trying to see you, but it seems like your will is able to withstand it. Well, if we're all asleep near him, maybe we're all dreaming of him. <laughs> That's I'm sure what it is. <laughs> yeah. Jugs is like, oh well. Now you're you um yeah, you get the sensation something happened, but uh you weren't affected by it. Uh and the rest of the night is undisturbed, so everyone gets the benefit of a full rest. And uh by the morning the snow has abated and you are able to kind of get your bearings uh, after you step out of the woods a little bit into a thinner area. You can definitely tell you are on this side of the river. And Mount Gacchus is the mountain that you kind of just climbed down the night before. So let's head to the path and start heading back to... I guess, I don't know, wherever. The, just follow the path. Well, there's no path down here. Um, yeah, but we should head. I guess, do we know the direction of the path based on where we are? Or... Which path were you referring to? Pass. Uh, so, pass. Oh, the pass? The Slanka Pass is 1,000 feet up the mountain. Oh, we got to go up the mountain to get to the? Yes. Slanka Pass. Holy shit. Well, follow the river down. Well, Berez is actually right here. The other side of the river, though. Um, Do we have any idea how wide it is or how yeah. fast it is? I don't know. Um, well, if you walk down to the river, then you'd basically go through the trees a little bit, and um, you, you're able to hear it. Um, by the falls, it's quite large, um, but you can see it's. it looks like it might be fordable, um, possibly. You're not sure how deep it is, but away from the falls, this distance that you are, um, it looks like it's much calmer. It is still moving. And it can, you can see that it, the land is now descending, and uh, Berez looks to be in fairly low ground for Barovia. So, so what I want to do just for fun and really know you guys is I'm going to run across the river back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth without falling in just to piss you off. <laughs> Look, it's Jesus. <laughs> All right. Um, you do that. Uh, yeah, no problem, guys. Why don't you come across? <laughs> it's not that deep. <laughs> Splash. Damn it. Um, yeah, so... All right, so if, yeah, Rictavio thinks this is a, probably the best plan you guys have. He thinks that trying to climb back up to the Solanka Pass would be very dangerous and difficult, and you would still have to get past the whole pass itself too, with the that green flame and everything. And yeah, he thinks that if you're going, to, if we're going to go to Berez anyway, at this point, it's probably the best. He's still kind of despondent over the loss of both his wagon and his so horse. So if you guys have some rope and you tie two links together, I could run to the other side and make sure that people don't get washed away in the river. As you hold on to a rope, I pull you across and they run back. We do the same thing until everybody's across. Yeah. How wide is the river? Um, the river is... If you keep going and looking for a, a narrower spot, and you can see that at some point it, it does diminish quite a bit. Um, so at one point that you can see the bank probably no more than, like, say, 50 yards across. You're still not sure how deep it is, though. And um, if uh, uh, Van Richten took off the armor off of his tiger, the tiger could swim. Has anybody got Tensor's floating disc? Mm -hmm. Got it in your campaign. <laughs> <laughs> I know. So I'd say, cast it, get on, let's go. Well, no. the other idea I was thinking, too, is I could, like, transfer, or I could uh, use Polymorph and turn one of us into, like, oh wait, a Brontosaurus or some shit. And... 
Just we... <laughs> fort it. <laughs> Hang on a second. Because yeah. we rested, right? Yeah. yeah. All right. Let me look at this one. Art River. <laughs> he is a priest. Can you part the river? <laughs> um, I think I... Let me look, because I do have... Oh, uh, this isn't... No. This is freestanding water, so... So, can, do we have enough rope to get 150 feet together? Do we have, any, we have three 50-foot lengths in the group? Casimir can cast fly up to three. He has three third-level slots he could use for that. So he could, like, fly everybody over? No, he I could cast fly on multiple people. Oh, wait, let me see. Fly is concentration, isn't it? Yeah, so he'd have to fly over and then, like, cast it from the other side on one of us. Yeah, but just transform into a big animal and take us over one well that's what i'm saying couldn't i i could a giant eagle you'd be able to carry one yeah like a giant eagle i could just carry someone one at a time and carry us all over could i just do that then we don't have to worry about it that would work yeah that's what i'm gonna do all right all right did you want casimir to use one of his fly or are you just gonna carry everyone i'll use my polymorph and Carry everyone. Okay. All right. When you carry me over, I start singing the never-ending story. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you uh, fly everyone across the river. Uh, I don't need help. I'm gonna run. Yeah. Okay. Well, I except fly for Adrian. Adrian. <laughs> um, and you manage to get to the other side of the river in safety. You're even able to keep the. You're even able to carry the tiger with his armor. As a giant. Um, eagle. Also, as a giant eagle. Uh, how, how, about how long does it take me to get everyone across? Um, we'll say half hour. Not even. So could I 15 use minutes. like 15 minutes to scout ahead and then come back? Yeah, sure. Um, what's your fly rate as an eagle? Good question. Fly like an eagle. <laughs> an eagle. Eighty. Eighty feet. Uh, and then, like, technically each turn, can't I, like, bonus yeah. action to technically do, like, 160 within a turn, kind of? I don't know. Well, it's... Do we're like not... You're not in within combat. Within 15 minutes, I'd be able to get pretty far. Yeah, give me a second. I'm looking at the movement rates here. Basically, normally you would go. It's 800 feet a minute. No, it would be 80 times uh, 10. A round is 6. 10 rounds in a minute, right? Yeah. Or, is that what it is? Yeah, each round is six seconds. So you can go 48,000 feet in an hour. Um, I would say that you could travel about a mile before your spell ran out. Yeah, that sounds about right. Berez is about a mile down. But it's, you could get there but not get back. You don't think you'd be able to get to Berez and back. I guess, how far can I see then, too? Right. Uh, well, Over your vision should thing. be fairly good with an eagle. Um, it, and I have advantage on perception checks that rely on sight, but mm -hmm. it doesn't say, like, a distance to sight. Yeah. You you definitely can, when you're in this forum, you can tell your, your far sight is quite good. And I guess, what, what are you looking for? You wouldn't be able to get, like, small details. But... I guess I would just like to fly in up the river and kind of see where Berez is like make sure that we're going the right direction before I okay you can come back all right in 15 minutes you can fly 2.2 miles at 80 feet that with the speed of 80 oh yeah I was thinking the speed of yeah never mind 
Yeah, an 80 foot speed, that would actually be, yeah, then you could actually fly yeah, there so and I back. I could actually go to Berez yeah. and come back. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So I'm sorry, I've completely forgot about the faster fly speed. Yes, um, so then you would actually be able to make it completely to Berez and come back. So, uh, yeah, you are able to fly off, and aloft enough, you can actually see, well, it's kind of hard to tell for sure, um, but you can have a general direction in which you're looking. Um, uh, let me see if I can give you some idea of what this is like. Yeah, probably it's, not fine details, but you know, at least. Well, some you're idea. able to. Fl I mean, it, the thing is, is that it's it's it, the whole village was flooded, you know, centuries yeah. ago. So it's like the ruins of a village, not an actual. Okay. Um. But basically. You can tell that the area is very marshy. It looks like um, the ground is stagnant uh, with lots of tall reeds and pools of water, stagnant water. Uh, there's a, a very thick shroud of fog covering everything, but you can see just kind of sticking out of the fog remnants of like old chimneys and like craggy ruins that look like smashed teeth. But and you do see there's a weird circle of standing stones a little ways off from the village, kind of similar to the megaliths you saw by the old bone grinder windmill. Okay. Um, you don't see anything moving. Okay. Then I'll just kind of come back and let everyone know what I saw and. Let them know that it seems safe enough to at least get to Berez. I don't know what's there, but... That's it. So, then I guess we'll head. Okay, so you guys continue following along the river. And... I'm going to say... You tell them ahead of time that there's um, this little divergence here. You can mm -hmm. see there's a little tributary that goes off. Uh, you figure that it would probably be best if they tried to pass that further or closer, further to towards where you guys are now, rather than waiting till you got to Berez, because that kind of would create a difficulty. Yeah. Um, but doing so. Um, you guys would reach Berez at normal movement rate within a few hours. So in any case, I gave you the description. I'm going to actually move the party to the map of Berez. And uh, this is a huge map. Uh, you guys are going to be in the kind of lower left-hand corner when you appear. If you scroll down to where the river is, you can see the icon for the party there. Oh, Each there one of are. these squares is 100 feet. So this, you've based on the description from what uh, Kyle was able to give you, uh, you can kind of tell what you were looking at here. But it's definitely very misty, boggy, ruined and deathly silent. You mentioned some rocks or something? Like well, that. the actual, there was uh, some standing stones over yeah. to the right. Uh, that's actually on the other side of the river. Okay, that's on the other side. Okay. Yeah. Because I was looking for it on the map. Yeah, it's actually not on the map, but... Um... Okay. What is this? Uh, yeah, was on. I able to tell what that was? I'm sorry, I was... Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, you weren't able to tell exactly what that was, but it was some kind of structure, it looked like. Okay. You caught the glimpse of what looked like some kind of thatched roof of some sort. So which way are you going to go? I say we go straight ahead. Yep. Yeah, okay. follow up to that. Yeah, we're just, that... 
Looks like some sort of rune of some sort. Okay. Uh, so the party approaches that area. And let me get up my little map here. Um, towards the... Oh, let me move the characters, or the party's icon here as you approach. So you can approach from that angle. Um, towards the south end of the village lie the remains of a mansion built on higher ground. It has been reduced to piles of stone and rotting timber. Empty arched windows stare at you. South of the ruin, an untamed garden runs rampant, so, uh, surrounded by broken walls that are no longer able to contain it. East of the ruin, someone has erected a crude wooden fence forming a circular yard in which several goats are penned. Surrounding the fence post are human skulls. Oh. That's not good. Is it dark? Um, what time of day is it? It would be probably about 11 o'clock or so. Oh, in the morning? Yeah. Okay. Um, it's not sunny. It's Barovia, but it is at least no longer snowing. I mean, uh, the temperature has dropped now. You've descended enough in elevation that um, it's. I mean, there's patches of snow here and there, but uh, the weather is not as deathly cold here. Uh, you're actually able to stow your winter gear. Do you want to go around to the front, or do you want to go through the garden? I'll follow you. Yeah. Go through the garden. Okay. Right. Mm, okay. <laughs> well, someone didn't like it. <laughs> Whatever. Um, all right. So you guys climb over the fence. These skulls don't seem to do anything as you cross over. Um, the garden looks like it's basically run wild um there's tall weeds and thorny vines underneath which you can kind of catch glimpses of what look to be nude sculptures of handsome men and beautiful women uh, as well as carved stone benches um uh you know what let's see I don't want to do this, really. Okay, you're attacked by four giant poisonous snakes while you're going through the garden. They're like one quarter CR, so... <laughs> oh, I'm immune to poison. I say back off, I'll fight them. Okay, uh, so I'll say you're able to defeat them pretty much by yourself, if, and I'll say you take uh, more than one. Three hit points of damage. What? I, I die. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to belabor cold. combat with some poisonous, like one quarter Dropped. CR snakes. Does that, does that make us go up a level again? <laughs> no, you, you lose a level Dude. specifically. <laughs> Just you. Just you. Damn it. Uh, but you're able to wind your way through the garden. Uh, which way were you heading? Towards the north or the east? The pen or the mansion? Towards the main building. Towards the mansion itself? Okay. Um, so you guys then... I gotta zoom in here a little bit. I gotta have two different views of this thing. Ah, where did your token go? Why don't I see it? Oh, because I was looking at the wrong map. Uh, by the time you get up to here, you've reached the mansion itself. Um, <clears throat> yeah, again, it's a ruined building, basically not a building itself, but really the ruins of a building, but it looks like there's various odds and ends littered throughout the remains. Furniture, I really want to see decor. what's over here. I, I, I didn't go see that. that way and look behind. I, I didn't see over that. Right. At this thing. You want to head in that direction? Just go through the yeah. manor or around it? I would want to go to like here and peek around the wall and see what we can see. Okay, so go past the mansion and down the front path, kind of. Yep. Yeah, because this place is a ruin, is it not? Which place? The mansion itself. The place we're in, the mansion. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty much a ruined building. Yeah, there's there's it, like I said, there's rotted remains of furniture and stuff in there, but it's mostly collapsed and destroyed, broken walls, that sort of thing. Okay. 
Um, so if you go around with the path, um, again, there's this pen with these goats in it. There's actually nine goats are on it, and um, this fence, <clears throat> excuse me, which was around the edge, uh, you see there's at least 50 human skulls mounted on top of the fence posts, spaced about 10 feet apart each. And the goats kind of look at you dully as you approach, but otherwise don't attack or do anything to harm you in any way. Um, start making a shitload of noise or anything? No, they don't seem to. Good. Um, so you reach the fence. Uh, you can see dimly, again, that's 500 feet away or so from where you're standing, but it looks to be some sort of building of some sort. Not a big one, but... Um, <laughs> And these little X's are actually scarecrows. You see a scarecrow standing in the field. I walk up to one of the scarecrows. Okay, so you approach the scarecrow? Yes. Um, it looks like it's it's mounted on some sort of a like X pattern, and it's just standing there motionless. Looks like it's made out of straw. and. So it's not a human body? It's no, it actually, it, yeah, it definitely looks like it's been hung there and, is it and it's creepy looking it doesn't look friendly no mm. it's not supposed to it's oh a scarecrow kyle your thing just went ape shit for some reason yeah, yeah. can you see me now yeah. yeah i don't know my uh my webcam has a blue light on it and the blue light just like turned off for a moment and turned back on yeah wow. oh i think we lost uh oh tim you still there huh. yeah Okay. You not hear me? Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I just see network conditions are affecting your call. That's all. Oh, did your lights go out in your house? Because you're like really. Yeah, you just got really dark. Yeah. That was my yeah. webcam. There we go. Yeah. There we go. You're back. And <laughs> now Kyle flew off yeah, the screen again. Yeah, my webcam's being screwy right now. I don't know what the heck. Mm. Um. Right. Maybe anyway, we're being hacked. I... <laughs> What's that? I don't. We're hacked. Oh. I don't like the scarecrow. Can I just cast the firebolt at it and try to set it on fire? Because it sure. sets unoccupied things on fire. Yeah, go ahead and make an attack roll. Ah, <laughs> uh, you hit it. Yeah, a flammable object hit by the spell ignites if it isn't being worn or carried, so it would set it on fire. Ah, uh, okay, so. Uh, da, 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 da. It kicks the crap out. All right, so yeah, it would actually be basically twice as much damage as normal. But as it catches on fire, it actually begins to thrash around wildly and what? dislodges itself from the uh, posts that it was on. I and... punched the shit out of it. Okay, yeah, it starts yeah. charging towards you. Um, <laughs> and Adrian, go ahead and make some attack rolls. I'm going to say you to... Well, actually, go ahead and um, just make a dex roll or initiative check first, just to see if this thing gets lucky and goes before you. But no, okay. Um, yeah, and you punch the shit out of it and destroy it, and stuffing flies in every direction, and it collapses in a heap of clothing. That was fun. But as you do that, all fifty of the human skulls open their mouths and let loose this horrible shrieking wail that echoes throughout the entire village, the ruins of the this village. Is, this is the oh, fireball. <laughs> and you see, um, these I was waiting for you forms to tell of me the skeletons all open and shoot a fireball at us, like the skulls and. <clears throat> Yeah, Amber Temple. That's what I was yeah. waiting for. And the goats turn into minotaurs. And... <laughs> the goats actually don't do anything, but the uh, remainder, you can see these rest of these skeletons uh, are starting to animate and head your direction. Skeletons oh, or skeletons? Ah, I'm sorry, scarecrows, Gross. not skeletons. Okay. Okay. Wait, so right there is where we were? Yeah. 
or thereabouts. Security. I mean, I don't. Yeah. Actually, I'd say the party, if they followed you over, you were probably actually closer to being right on the edge. Well, I mean, I can do it from 120 feet away, so I could be just about anywhere, but. <laughs> Well, Adrian was walking up there to yeah. mess with it, so I'm assuming the party didn't just stay 100 feet away. <laughs> I did. I don't like Adrian. <laughs> so uh, what are you guys going to do? Uh, I guess we're, I, I'm going to wait for people to shoot fireballs at all. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's one. So all the X's are... Yeah, well, each X is a scarecrow, and yeah, they're all animated and slowly sh uh, kind of shambling their way towards you. Two fireballs, oh, wow. pages. So yeah, I, mean, I just I call would... out, hello. Hello. Um, I, I would shoot fireballs. <laughs> okay. Okay. When they get within 120 feet, you mean? Yeah. Okay. Well, until they do that, I just yell out, hello. Okay. Um, everyone can make a perception check. Because I don't know why we're beating up scarecrows. Because uh, they're animated now. <laughs> well, yeah, but we, we, we started it. <laughs> well, I didn't like the scarecrow. He was creepy looking. Nine? Really? Perception, oh. you said? Yes. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, Adrian, <laughs> you rolled fairly well uh you see uh movement it's hard to tell what it is but you see something moving by that building that clytus was interested in when you say clytus you're right there's something near that building <laughs> right there that yeah. one yeah okay. i start walking toward that building and wave hello okay I say we, let's i say we move as a party towards the building and then we shoot firebolts as we move towards the scarecrow. Okay. Our worst. Well, there's right. one coming behind us. So, yeah, uh, so there's... Do you want to go towards the building, or do you want to go get that one first? I just walked towards the Otherwise, building. Otherwise, we're going to get surrounded. I, well, you, we took it down in, what, one round. I'm not I'm not overly concerned about the scarecrows, but... <sighs> okay. Okay, so you guys are able to keep these things at bay, uh, and... Uh, I'm just going to move you closer to here and uh, actually, uh, hang on, I've got a closer view of it. And, okay, this is completely a rotated wrong here, but let me just adjust for what direction. Jeez, quit jumping around on my screen, Kyle. <laughs> I don't know what my webcam is doing. It doesn't like you. Um, uh, let me just rearrange you guys here on this map. That it, uh, oh, we can't know. see it anyway, so it's all good. It's all good. Yeah, but you're kind of coming from the opposite direction. I thought you would. I wasn't anticipating the whole avalanche thing. <laughs> 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 I thought you'd be coming from the road, so... A little bit different. Um, okay, so what would. Oh. Yeah, how many of these things would be. Okay. Um, let me move you guys to this map. So as you're approaching, that's what you see. And huh. let me give you a brief description of it because it's kind of weird. So it's like a tree hut? Yeah, let me give me a brief description of it because it's kind of weird. Uh, <laughs> someone has built a ramshackle wooden hut on the stump of what was once an enormous tree. The rotting roots of the stump thrust up from the mire like the legs of a gigantic spider. Uh, an open doorway is visible on one side of the hut beneath which... Uh, oh, no, that wouldn't be there. Um, flanking the hut's doorway are two iron cages that dangle like hideous ornaments from the eaves. 
Scores of ravens are trapped in each one. They squawk and flutter their wings excitedly as you approach. And around the back was where you saw this movement. And you see something come out. And it's really friggin' weird. It's what looks to be a huge skull floating upside down. Actually, it's the bottom of a skull, like a huge jawbone and lower portion of a skull that's been hollowed out, and it's floating above the ground, and sitting in it, you see a figure. And it actually starts swooping towards you, and as it does, it's going to do something. So I'm going to say, let's roll initiative. Can't just have a conversation. Oh, I didn't click my token, but I rolled a 20. We I kind of want to uh, keep that, even though. <laughs> we need to let those ravens out, I think. <clears throat> I just copied and pulled. You think so? Wow. I rolled a 6, you rolled a 10, you beat me. Holy crap! Mm -hmm. And yet nice. we both got an 11. Look yeah. at that. <laughs> Rowan and I both got a 20. I think a natural 20 and an initiative means you get to go twice before everybody else gets to go. <laughs> yeah. That's a good idea. I like that. Yep, sounds good. <laughs> okay. So would you get uh, 20 jugs? Yeah. All right. Uh, let me add Casimir. What's your jacks? Uh, my dex is 12. Okay, you're first. <clears throat> and let me add Rectavio. So the names are there now. That's weird. Yeah. What are they? What are there? I'm sorry, what? The names. <laughs> They're the showing last. up this time. In Were you not seeing? Battle, they weren't there. They weren't showing up. Oh, I didn't even yeah. notice. Yeah, now they are. They were for me. That's mm -hmm. weird. Um, oh, I got it. Before I forget, let me add a tiger here. It's not a dire tiger, but it's still a big kitty. And I'm just gonna have him go on Rictavia's turn. How high up are those uh, cages? They're well, flanking I mean, the door. Can we even see the cages, really, from the side we came from? Nah, see... Not really from the side, no. Uh, maybe you're actually... this one. Yeah, maybe yeah. the bottom one there. Yeah, yeah, you'd be able to see it. No, they're, they're just they're on the roots, so I don't know. Okay. We'll say five feet off the ground. So, if you, yeah, if you climbed up the roots, you'd be at the cage, basically. All right. Uh, Does Baba Lysaga where she actually is? Uh, yeah. Okay. And I gotta add her. Oh, for fuck's sake, let me ungroup these things. <laughs> the skull doesn't get an initiative. <laughs> <clears throat> works against witches okay I think that should do it so it looks like I can't see okay. all right so Rowan uh, looks like you're first in line actually jugs is he's got a better dex oh did yeah, I... I guess technically yeah okay so jugs is up um so I mean the Baba Lysaga on this skull thing is like swooping at us and doesn't seem friendly. Well, I she's kind of swooping towards you. She didn't. I just roll ask for initiative. <laughs> she hasn't actually done anything yet. Yeah, I'm going to move down there where I can probably see her. Yeah. Um. I'm going to go ahead and just assume it's not friendly and cast a firebolt. Okay. If she was friendly, she's not anymore. Wow. Wow. Uh, yeah, that, that hits her. <laughs> Jesus. Okay. 
Okay. It's a pretty so... shitty roll. Yeah. Three. Okay. I can get as much as 20. <laughs> the perfect roll. Uh, she shrieks oh, in fury at you. Oh, well, uh, there goes the whole parley idea. <laughs> Rowan, you're up. <clears throat> okay. She's pretty far away, right? Some distance, yes. Ninety, yeah, about a hundred feet. Okay. <clears throat> well, yeah, even if I move thirty, she's not within my range for that. So, <clears throat> I'm going to ready an action for when she gets within sixty feet of me. I'm going to cast that banishment spell. Okay. Oh. Okay. Um, right. Then next up would be Casimir. And he... Hmm. I've got too many windows open here. What would Casimir do now? He didn't actually... He's going to go greater invisible, as he tends to do in these sorts of battles. Which means the GM gets to have lots of fun switching between different layers as he moves them around. <laughs> so he will move somewhere where you guys don't see. Um, okay. Uh, while you're standing there, abruptly... Um, a bolt of lightning appears from seemingly thin air, uh, the end of which uh, is attached to a familiar figure, uh, actually. One of the hags that you had run oh, into. Nice. Biscuit. Uh, and it does a straight line between Clytus and Rowan. And uh, you guys need to make uh, dexterity saving throws. <laughs> <laughs> Rough. Okay, uh, Tim, I you made even, it. David, you did not. I can't even use my inspiration on that roll. <laughs> <laughs> That's a rough one right there. Okay. <laughs> You're just eating that lightning wing pulled. <laughs> yep. Why can I not find it here? Okay, so I believe it's 8d6. Yeah, it is 8d6. Oh, yeah, I could have told you. Yeah, I figured that it was, but I couldn't <laughs> remember. So 30 points if you failed, 15 Christ. if you made it, and didn't have evasion. And uh, she, after casting that spell, cackles and <laughs> disappears. Bing. Son of a biscuit. All right, we'll kill her, too. Okay, so that was that thing's turn. Um, now it's Baba's turn. Baba O'Reilly. Uh, <laughs> she, let's see. I have to check, check some distances here. Okay, well, she can only move 30 in this floating skull thing, so she winds up right here, but that's enough to be about, mm. let's see, yeah, she's 60 feet from Adrin. And me. Which, no. Uh, 80 feet from oh, me. You're 80. 80 feet. Okay. Yeah, so your ready to action is not triggered and it yeah. is therefore lost, but uh, she points her finger at you, Adrin. And you need to make a saving throw. Constitution does, saving throw. Does she seem to be casting a spell? Yes, she does. Could I just try to counterspell that? Yes, so it would be DC 17 to counterspell. It's a level 7? 
Jesus Christ. <laughs> Roll well. <laughs> he rolled well, poorly. <laughs> Don't you get pluses? I mean, I could. Could I use uh, advantage? I guess that's the only other thing. You make an ability check, so your roll is a 13 raw. Your ability check would be your spell casting ability, which would be what? Twenty. Wait. Charisma? Is it your charisma? What's your spellcasting ability? Yeah, charisma. it's charisma. Is that a twenty? No, it's eighteen. So that's plus four. You get you roll a seventeen. It's it's a it's an ability check using your spellcasting ability. Oh yeah. Yeah. So it's it's, so it's, I do it's a seven. You got a 17. Oh. And... So, yeah, you did counter it. Uh, yeah. yeah. And she doesn't have counterspell. So, okay, she's not able to counterspell your counterspell. So, uh, you feel some kind of necrotic energy wash over you, Adrin, but uh, at the last moment, uh, his counterspell diffuses the energy before it can consume you. You rock, Clytus. <laughs> Well, Clytus didn't do it. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> Thanks, Clytus. <laughs> Good job, Clytus. No problem. <laughs> sure, no worries. <laughs> okay, well, that was Baba Lasaga's turn. Uh, it is now, speaking of Clytus, your turn. Um, yeah, I'm thinking I want to duck behind here. So let's see, I will move there. How tall are those? Because Clytus is short, he could probably hide. Yeah, I'd say it gives you like partial cover. <laughs> That's my idea is to like get closer, duck behind there. Oh, before I move though, actually, I will cast aid. So um, from this point, I should be able to get that would get everybody. So uh, four of you, I will give plus five hit points to. So who wants it? It'd be Adrin, Rictavio, Jugs, and Rowan. That works. I don't need it. You can give it to someone else. So, well, Andrew, uh, Rictavio, Rowan. I'll take it. Yeah. Uh, so that would be the tiger, I guess. <laughs> sure. Or, oh wait, is it four? It says choose up to three within range. Oh, up to three. Or did okay, you cast it as a higher level? No, no, no. Oh no, no the higher three. level level just gives them additional five. I'll just anyway. do three. Okay, so it's just three. So I will give it to Rowan, Rictavio, and Adrian. Okay. You each get five additional hit points for eight hours. Guys. Nice. <clears throat> okay. Oh, why isn't it showing his hit points here? Give me a minute. Frack's sake, come on. <laughs> These are basically above and beyond the normal hit point rung, right? They're temporary hit points, right? Yeah. yeah, for eight hours. Okay. Okay, and basically you get half cover behind that root, so you'd get plus two to your dex and AC. Clytus. Um, all right, Edrin's up. Hmm, so she is. Um, how high up in the air is this? skull thingy. Not very, like six feet up, maybe. So I'd have to jump on top of it to punch her. Yes. Alright, so I'm going to uh, move... I'm going to take... What is it going? I'm going to do a step of the wind to get a bonus action to dash. So I'm going to move up. Uh, whoop. Allow me to move 110 feet, so it'll get me to there. I'm going to jump on top of that, and my jump distance is doubled because oh, I took this action. So I'm, I'm just basically going to jump up there so I can punch her. Okay. And so then I'm going to swing at her. Okay. And I guess I'm going to maybe miss. Uh, yep, but second one, or yeah, second one hits. 
She's not undead, is she? She is not. Okay. Ah, hang on. So 13 points, magical bludgeoning damage. Yeah, oh no, that's the... That's so radiant, okay. Oh, th I'm sorry, that's with the sunblade. That's right. Okay. Um, she snarls at you, but uh, doesn't get an immediate reaction. Does it do damage to her? Yes, it appears to. Okay. All uh, right, Rictavio. Uh, um, -da -bum -bum -bum. He casts... Uh, scroll through here. Does the tiger go at the same time as him then? Yes. Okay. I didn't know because the tiger wasn't in there. No, I'm going to have it go at the same time. Okay. Uh, what is it? Okay, so he's got a touch. Um, Rick Tavio will also move up next to Clytus. And he casts Death Ward on you, Clytus. Okay. What does that do? Uh, let's see. You touch a creature and grant it a measure of protection from death. The first time you would drop to zero hit points as a result from taking damage, you instead drop to one hit point and the spell ends. So I'll basically, take, if you would be dropped... How long does that last? Uh, up to eight hours. Oh, wow. Cool. And it's not concentration. That's a cool spell. Yeah. It's a nice spell. So uh, you have that going for you, which is nice. Um, okay, and at that moment... Oh, I forgot about the tiger. Uh, tiger runs... Uh, blah, 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 blah. What's the tiger's movement? 40 feet, I thought so. So it will basically still not be able to actually attack, but it runs up to... next to the skull and let's see yeah I think we'll do it this way um, appearing over here you see another familiar face Morgantha <sighs> And she casts a lightning oh, no. bolt, um, catching Rectavio, Clytus, and unfortunately, uh, Casimir, who happened to be in line with uh, the two these, of them. These aren't blocking at all? No. not. No. They give you like kind of half cover. So you would all actually right. get plus two to your dex, which I think would help your reflex. Uh, that's not a reflex. That's a dex save. So you yeah, you get plus so two to your save. Everybody gets plus three if you're within ten feet of me. So Rictavio does. Yeah. Oh, so... <laughs> oh, oh, oh crap! Oh, natural one. Oh. Inspiration. Inspiration. Sorry. He already oh, used. Already didn't you? Used. I used it for this session already. Yeah. What'd you use it for? I don't remember. To not die. Yeah, to All grab onto the work. wagon. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I saved you every time. Ah, crap, and Rictavio failed miserably. Oh, I, I oh. ain't going to cut it. <laughs> oh, well. Casimir got a natural 20, but uh, Rictavio was not so lucky. Did Rictavio get his plus three as well? He rolled a four, so you got a nine. Oh, so yeah, no. well, he got <laughs> it. But... Than me. <laughs> uh, so 29 points. Oh, man. If you take full, Casimir will take half which is good because he doesn't have a lot to begin with uh dang it being invisible really helps you there and uh she cackles Ow. and disappears fuck uh this whole disappearing act is a little I'm annoying casting a spell on disappearing i don't know how that's that, that that's bs man <laughs> jugs is up All right, let's see. So I can't 
can't quite reach that area. Hmm. Actually, you know what? Um, the other hag w um, wouldn't have <clears throat> been able to do that. You're right. Oh. Um, she wouldn't have been able to go invisible. Um, mm, to re I guess to reduce, because you guys may have taken completely different actions if you have seen her, uh, I'll just balance it out and say Morgantha didn't. So I'll leave her there. We'll balance that out. So she was not able to do that. To blink out? Okay. Yeah. I don't remember who Morgantha is. She's the night hag. This is the coven that you killed one of the sisters. Oh, okay. Yep. Well, I thought like two of them. Oh, okay. No, we only got one. All right. So I'm going to move there. Yeah. No, I'm not. I'm just going to stay where I'm at. I don't care. Because I can cast a firebolt at Morgantha. Okay. And I will use advantage, but does that help? Uh, AC is 15 hit. Uh, 17. Well, there you go. <laughs> so she ducks behind and misses. She also actually gets also partial cover from the root yeah, between you. Um, yeah, then, okay. Flying over the root. Yep. Rowan would be up. All right, I'm going to... Do a, a double move to about there. Okay, so you dash over to there. Yep. Um, get rid of some of these things here. Okay. Casimir, um, he drops a fireball on Morgantha. Nice. And stays invisible. She needs to make a Death save. Oh, excuse me, not death save, a deck save. Not quite enough. She takes a 31 damage. Wow. From a fireball. Nice. Good. And okay. Oh, crap. I didn't want to do that. Jesus. Can you move the tree? Yeah, hang on. Oh. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hang on. Now I have to select the map, move that to the back. There we go. Okay. Uh, so now, um, Morgantha's sister, Bella, appears. She's right there. And she is going to... Cast a spell at, um, you see her eyes become an inky void imbued with dread power. And uh, Rowan, you need to make a wisdom saving throw. Oh, that's my best one. Good. Wish me luck. luck. Hey, there oh, you go. oh, nice. All right, so you are able to hold off her ill will, and you uh, f kind of fight off the. You suddenly Morning. felt like you kind of wanted to go to sleep, but you kind of slap yourself and manage to avoid doing so. And she growls at you in fury. And that was her action, so she can't do anything else. Uh, Baba La Saga. So she's got this uh, guy with a bunch of flying fists in front of him. Uh, 
It's a little bit closer than the tiger. Uh, she speaks a word of power. Sweet. And... Da, 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 da. You need to make a constitution saving throw. Fuck. Actually, um... How many hit points do you have? 70. Okay. You are stunned. No save. Okay. Uh, at the end of your turn, each of your turns, you can make a constitution saving throw. And if it's successful, that you're no longer stunned. So she cast a power word stun on you. And she then moves the little go-kart skull. Um... Uh, kind of pushing you off the side <laughs> as she does so as a uh, flourish and <laughs> uh, and she says another word just as a free action that you have no idea what it means in some kind of weird foreign language it sounded like and we will see what happens as a result of that. Clytus is up. We'll crit. <laughs> Let's see. I'll see what I can get first. Okay, I'm going to hop closer to her. Run up here. And then I'm going to touch myself for, I'll use six levels worth to bring me back up to 62. So I still have 20 points I can do with touching. And that'll be my round. Okay. Uh, Adrian, um, you don't get to act this turn because you're stunned, but you do get to make a saving throw to see if you overcome the stunning. And you said constitution, right? Yes. Uh, it'd be enough. You are no longer stunned. But uh, that was the end of your turn, so you'll get to act next round. All right, Rick Tavio. Um, he is going to crap his pants at all that's going on here. <laughs> Uh, no, he will probably actually, um, blah, 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 blah. I think he's going to cast Sanctuary and I think he'll cast it on himself at the moment <laughs> and Stay where he is, uh, but he'll have his tiger go after Baba. And tiger has enough movement to run up there and try to maul the witch on the skull. Nice. Uh, and actually, since it's 20 feet, pounce. he's going to pounce. Try and knock yes. her off. Try and knock her out of the skull. So let's oh, let's see. Eight. Oh, come on. He was one off. He didn't hit her for the bite attack. Oh, well. Uh, but he will try, try to bite her. Well, can I uh, can I use my bend luck on him? I don't know. Can you? Well, it says when uh, another creature you can see makes an attack roll, an ability check, or a saving throw, you can use your reaction and spend two sorcery points to roll 1d4. That would be enough to knock him off. Yeah. Nice. Don't even need to so roll it. He was off. two sorcery points. Okay. Then in that case, the pounce works. Uh, he first, the tiger does uh, 11 points of damage, the claw, and knocks her right out of the floating skull <laughs> onto the ground. Oh, we'll just put her actually nice. right there. So she's no longer in the skull. The skull actually keeps floating, oddly. But uh, she is now prone on the ground with a tiger on top of her. Nice. 
that's going. Uh, that would be the Get tiger the next of you. Uh, Morgantha. Uh, she. What would Morgantha do? She's got all sorts of nifty abilities she can do here. Run? Uh, yeah. Run, yeah. Sure. She would like to run. Do that one. <laughs> um, she will. Well, she knows you're some sort of paladin, so that may not be the best option. Oh, uh, that's this. Yeah, that won't work. She is going to. Oh, that's also wisdom. Okay, well, six of one, half dozen of the other. Uh, Clytus, uh, she attempts to polymorph you. Okay. So you need to make a wisdom saving throw. I get a plus three. Oh, for crepes. Oh, sake. no. 11. 11 is 11? not enough. God damn it. My save rolls have been awful. Oh, not good. Um, sh let's see. Give me a what second I, here. A mouse? Yeah, I was going to say a mouse, I think, was what she was going to. Give me a second to a quick look up the beast here. Yeah. <clears throat> Joke's on her. I'm going to breed like a mouse and then we'll overwhelm her with her numbers. <laughs> Run up her leg. <laughs> actually, she transforms you. Oh, let's see. Then you can actually do something. She doesn't like that. Where's the mouse? Okay. Yeah, you're you're transformed into a, oh, a rat, basically. That's what I was looking for. So you are a rat. You are a tiny beast. <clears throat> do I get to reroll each round or... Uh, so when it's uh, basically against someone, um, it's concentration, I know. Um, as as uh, I mean, she can't cast any other concentration spells. Aha. Right, so she can't cast any other concentration spells. I don't see any other... The only way you're going to revert is if you get to zero hit points. Yeah. So, so you know how this works, Kyle. Just cast <laughs> it's a rat. Yeah. Yeah, you've, uh, it's on the, I think it's in the compendium. You can pull up the stats for it, but it's got like one hit point. So, um, so that was Morgantha. Oh, she, uh, then also will move off to the side. So this here. is why we try to talk before we start burning things down. <laughs> Jugs is up. You think these three were going to talk to us? <laughs> Move to like there. To where? Oh, I moved my character. I can't see it. <laughs> what? Now I can. Oh, yep. Okay. Yeah, now I can. Oh. Okay. Apparently it's slow. Yeah, my um, 20 must be sluggish today. And how does concentration work again? I gotta. How do you lose. If you take damage, you have you take to. Damage, you got to, uh, it's a constitution save of 10 Plus or the half the damage taken, whichever, whichever is higher. Whichever is higher, yeah. Okay. So if you do her dam enough damage, she might lose it. Hmm. I'm going to cast a. Fireball at her. Oh, nice. <laughs> okay, so she needs to make a deck save. What's her DC again? 16. Uh, which she made. So she'll take half uh, 28, uh -huh. so 14. She'll take 14. And the DC to the con save. Well, let me take the damage first. Yeah. So 14. And then the DC will be 10, right? Because so. it's whatever's higher. Yep. Yeah, so, so you take 10 or a bad one. roll. <laughs> she can roll a one. All right, so constitution save. Scroll past all her scrolls here. Her constitution is plus three. She rolled a 16, 19. Yeah, she yeah, maintains she passes. her concentration. <laughs> but good idea. Unfortunately, she keeps Cletus a mouse a uh, rat sorry Rowan's up whoa my screen just went blank that was weird oh. <clears throat> alright I'm gonna move like 10 feet up to here 
and then I'm gonna do my radiance of the dawn on those two. It's thirty feet. Okay. Alrighty, and um, this hostile creature must make a Constitution savings. Yeah. <laughs> what, what was that heck noise? Was that? <laughs> it was hilarious timing, though. <laughs> oh, that's my uh, notif <laughs> notification on my. That was the sound effect for his oh. radiance of the dawn. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, DC is 16, is that right? Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, wait, 17 now, I think. Wait, let me look. Is that? <laughs> yeah, it is 16. Okay, if whatever that is, please mute it. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm enjoying it, what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, um, Bella Sunbane Ten. made her save. Ten points old. So she takes half damage, so she takes five points radiant damage. We've been yeah. having some awful damage rolls today. Yeah. Uh, Baba La Saga, though, failed, so she takes the full ten points. Yay. Yippee! <laughs> 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 and Casimir, uh, let's see, does he have another fireball in him? Uh, how many fireballs does he have in him? I think he cast the same level of. Yeah. Oh, no, he didn't cast fly. So, yeah, he could do another fireball. Uh, so, he doesn't want to get the tiger, so he's going to cast it on Morgantha again. <laughs> so, she will need to first. Fail this time. Fail. Uh, 30. Okay. So, she needs to. <laughs> oh. Unfortunately, yeah, she got 20. Um, so she, so she made 15. 15. And then she's got to roll DC 10 for concentration again. Yep. <sighs> oh, four! Hey! All right, so, Clytus, uh, you are no longer a mouse or a rat or anything else but Clytus. <laughs> awesome. So you are a rat still. <laughs> hey! <laughs> uh Bella uh she is going to do something else here. Way too many spells here to keep looking up. Um she will attempt Rowan, uh she's going to try another spell on you. Uh you need to make a wisdom saving throw. He's not there. Oh, crap. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, let me see the range of this spell. Well, what do you know his character sheet? You can just That's true. Yeah, I, actually, I, I could just roll for him. Yeah, let me pull it up here. You need to make a wisdom save there, Dave. Oh, there he oh, is. there he is. Okay. All right. uh, yes, Dave, please make a wisdom saving throw. Oh, no! use your inspiration. Oh, Wani. Yes, I will. <laughs> Did you already not use yours? No, I haven't used it. Okay. Uh, okay, so you managed to shake off uh, this feeling of fright that descends over you. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, Wani. Yeah. And she retreats back away out of your area here <laughs> smart oh she needs to still though uh, she was um Damn it. that's instantaneous though isn't yeah it? that radiance of the dawn yeah, is, is it instantaneous doesn't stay, i, I was think. thinking your swirly guy thing no 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 that was just uh that was an instantaneous effect so never mind yeah. um she would well she'll still back away from you she doesn't like being around you right um <laughs> <You're smelly>. okay yeah <laughs> you stink 
Babalazaga. All these damn spellcasters. Um, <laughs> She's pinned or something. Right? Yeah, so she is prone. She's got this tiger on her. Uh, how would she get the tiger off her? <laughs> um, Good question. What would Jesus do? What would Jeebus do? <laughs> what would Baba Lysaga He'd heal everybody. Yeah, she's gonna... Hmm. Well, she's prone. She's not actually pinned or anything. She's just prone. Yeah. So uh, she can cast spells still. Yeah, she, oh, she'll right? stand up from yeah. prone. Um, and she's oh, okay. going to... Yeah, she'll, um, hang on, I'm looking this up here. She's really afraid of this tiger, so she actually casts Blight on it. Uh, it needs to make a constitution saving throw, which being a tiger, it should hopefully not be too bad at. Yeah, plus two. Oh boy, it rolled a two. Four, it fails. Um... Okay, uh, let's see how much damage Mr. Tiger takes. Twenty-seven points of necrotic damage. Ouch. But it actually has eighty-four. Oh shoot! Wow, nice. So it's more HP than any of us. Yeah. Okay, let me get. Uh, Oh, you guys should be able to see its bars too. So you see how healthy it is. Okay. I don't know why the name is so high and below above. Oh, because I have them rotated. That's why. Okay. Um, and at the same time, um, Clytus, you mm -hmm. feel the root beneath you start to tremble and shake. Oh, my God. And Rowan, you do as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, as does. And Rick. Rictavio, yeah, as these roots start to pull themselves out of the earth. And you see the whole hut actually stands up and starts moving around. Um, it actually is animated. The whole hut is animated. <laughs> and I need to move this back to the token layer. And it... I'm just going to have it go on Baba Lasaga's turn because I don't want to roll a separate initiative for it. Um, so it gets three, atta oh, three attacks with its roots. So I'm just going to go one each on Clytus, Rictavio, and Rowan. Okay. So plus 12 um, to be 19 to hit no, I'm sorry. That was a one. Natural one, it missed. Oh. I, I'm going to roll a different dice because I can't read that one anymore. And uh, 15 to hit Rictavio. I think Did that... it drop its roots? Yeah, it <laughs> dropped its roots. Yes. Uh, Rictavio, <clears throat> Rictavio, what's your AC? Uh, Rictavio's AC sucks. Uh, he's only got leather armor. So he gets hit oh, with one of these roots. Ouch! 35 points of damage. Holy crap. Oh my god. Uh, night night, Fabio. And Rowan, uh, I'm assuming a 27 hits you. Oh yeah, 16. Yep. Night night, Rowan. <laughs> you take 31 points from bludgeoning damage from this thing. Wow. 31? Yep. <laughs> and um, the three of you, uh, well, three of you, uh, uh, Clytus, you and Rowan and Rictavio each can make a perception check. Yeah. It's worked so well so far. Yeah, right. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, well this time too. I have... Oh, okay. <laughs> if you combine us, we have sixteen. Yes. Um. Okay, and that was uh, Bubble Saga's turn. Clytus, you're up. You've got uh, this great big ass hut in front of you. That's no fine. longer I providing go... you cover, by the way. <laughs> I go over here to whack her. Okay, uh, you do leave its threatened area, so it gets an attack op opportunity attack uh, against you. Damn it. Uh, 15, though, probably is not enough to That's not enough to do you damage. Okay, so you oh, managed to disengage. Yeah. Kill the bitch! <laughs> All right, so I'm going to go... Uh, it's 13 hit. Uh, 13 does not. Okay, but the other one hits. Um, let's see... Trying to figure out. I'm going to do a divine smite on her. If I can find the damn thing. Here we go. All right, I'm going to go ahead and burn. Let's see. Burn, I'll burn a third burn. level spell slot. And that will give me. So the initial hit will be this. Plus. This. So, so 37. 37. Okay. That wounds her. And that is. Divine. Are you still stunned, Andrew? Radiant. Radiant damage. No, he's not. Oh, okay. Okay, and that's my turn. All right, Adrian, you are no longer stunned. All right, I move to flank Baba. So let's the Baba baby. Okay. Baba baby. Baba baby. <laughs> oh, Ooh, you dropped the sun blade. No, oh, flanking. you're flanking. You're flanking. You don't. You grab hold of it. So both the. Uh, so it's 29, 20, 21, 21. Yeah, all those will definitely yep. hit. Thirty-seven. Kill her! Oh no, she's got plenty left. She's got plenty left. All right, Rictavio is. Oh wait. Uh... Yeah. Okay. I, for... I forgot to roll his uh, the thing to overcome his sanctuary but it would have anyway but yeah uh, he's not taking any chances um he's moving back it doesn't get another opportunity attack because it took one against Clytus. Uh, it's get did uh that one guy ever go where's his Sorry, turn what? in the order the, the magic user guy yeah casimir's coming up he goes up to okay. i couldn't remember where he yeah, was. yeah he's out of the order because he's uh, uh he's hidden he's invisible oh that's why okay uh, uh, but he normally goes after Rowan. Um, so he's going to hold back um, and make his way. Actually, he wouldn't move that way. Probably He'll probably more likely move this way. He's moving towards Rowan in case Rowan needs some healing. <laughs> he needs some Yeah, healing. he does, but he's thinking of his friends first. Um, Morgantha, okay. Uh, he, she cackles at you and says... Now, let's pay back for my sister, shall we? And she casts a spell on you. Bite me. Well, a good idea. She casts Eye Bite. Uh, her eyes become blackened. And, uh, Cletus, you need to make a wisdom saving throw. Okay. What is it against? Wisdom. Wisdom. Oh. Uh, no, 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 but 13. What type of save is it? Because I am immune to a few things. Yeah. Um, she isn't going to do the panicked thing. She is going to do... Uh, she was trying to make you fall asleep. Oh. Uh, and a 10 is not enough. Uh, you fall unconscious. That would be 13. 13 uh, is not enough. Okay. <laughs> is, that a, is it a charm or any kind of, or is it just a straight up... Doesn't say anything to that effect. Okay. Then I fall asleep. Titus, go sleepy. <laughs> uh, 
Jugs is up. You know what? He's 30 feet away. <clears throat> I would kill to roll a good saving roll for <laughs> this game. Well, okay. I'm going to come up here and slap Clytus away. <laughs> <laughs> Which actually does wake him up. <laughs> okay, well that helped. Nice. <sighs> All right. And then I'm going to. Let's see. Oh, I'll stand like right there, kind of towards the side, so I can cast a spell without hitting Clytus as well. Is the idea. Okay. Um, uh... And. Cause I, can I slap him without it being an action? I guess I should ask that first. I would say that's your action to slap him. That but is you, my action. Yeah, okay. but you can move more if you have more movement. But um, I don't have more movement, so I, that'll be it. Okay. Rowan is up. Because that was about 30. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> so... I'm going to, because they already got that attack of opportunity, so I can move out of the threatened area as well. Okay. And then I'm going to cast my Scorching Ray again, if I can find the damn thing. On whom? Um, or at whom, I guess, would be the proper uh, way. Oh, at Bella? Okay. No, nah, I'll I'll do that. Her, the big okay. dog again. I can't. Baba find baby. Baba there baby. It goes. Damn. No, oh, fumbled a scorching ray. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you hit the tiger. No. Uh, <laughs> Fourteen. No. Nope. Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the dice. Or these aren't dice, but they're betraying oh. you. Roll 20 does not like you today. No, apparently no. not. Yikes. Uh, oh. Casimir. My Casimir, save the day. It's <laughs> all right. I, I would have got like four in damage anyway. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, shit. Let's see. Uh, yeah, he can't really do that. Well. Uh, now there's this big freaking tank walking around in the middle of the battlefield kind of makes things complicated. Uh, but he's going to risk that it doesn't get an opportunity to attack. And uh, Rowan, you and Rictavio hear fast footsteps running like underneath the hut. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, then uh, suddenly uh, a cone of cold comes firing out from really almost beneath the front door of this hut <laughs> uh, engulfing Bella and it's constitution saving throw which she fails hey. she takes 32 points of cold damage finally yeah, someone takes some freaking <laughs> damage around here all right, uh, it's now her turn. Uh, does she have any kind of... No, she doesn't have a way to see invisible, so... Unless... Oh, wait, I was looking at Casimir. Uh... No, she doesn't either. But she might be able to... No, she can't do that either. She can't see him, so she can't target him. She's instead going to... Uh, how many of these does she have left? Oh, she's got one more left. She's going to lightning bolt the tiger. Even though nobody else is in line, she wants. She doesn't want that tiger killing off the Isn't witch. Isn't the hut in line? The hut? What? The hut. No, this is Bella, not Morgantha. Oh. 
This is this one right there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, tiger fails its deck save. Oh my god. Twenty-three points. Four ones. <laughs> Two sixes. That's a but lot yeah. of ones. Yeah, That's Tiger's still up though. Ah, Baba Lizaga. What else can she do? Uh, she how many hit points does she have left here uh, she's still pretty confident she's going to what could she do now yeah she's gonna polymorph that tiger well actually I think Adrian you did more damage last time she's gonna polymorph try to polymorph you so I believe this is also a wisdom save, which you are, I'm sure, very bad at. <laughs> it is a wisdom yep, save. Yep, it's a throw. wisdom save. Yeah. Oh, nice! Oh, or wait, you don't have advantage on a save. Uh, are you? No. Are you blessed by his? No. Okay. And I can't see him to use my bend lock or anything, right? Uh, at the moment, well, you could see him. Yeah. Yeah. That's the, the the hut's lifted up, so it's off the ground, so you can see between its legs. So I can give you a D four. Try to. Okay. See how much you give him. Roll a four. Ooh, excuse me. All right. Slash roll one D four. I gave you a three, so you got a 17. Uh, 17 would be enough. Aha. You are not polymorphed. She growls in frustration. Um, now the hut. Pizza the hut. Um, Pizza the hut. <laughs> uh, it doesn't like this tiger attacking her mistress, so it's going to step up. And, well, first it'll attack the tiger, and let's see what happens after that. So one root. Oh, crap. Misses? How can I root miss a tiger? Uh, there we go. 19 hits. Uh. Ouch! Okay. Oh Ti <laughs> tiger drops. <laughs> Oh, man. And it's got two more attacks. Uh, let's see. Um, hang on. Does this thing? Two more? I thought you said it only got three. Yeah. You that said... was one attack. I thought it missed the first one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You're right. I'm sorry. It gets one more attack. I'm sorry. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay. It... Actually, you see it sway, swing a tentacle in the middle right in front of it at something you can't see. Uh, natural one. <laughs> oh, it drops a second tentacle. Uh, it dropped the rusty cage or whatever it is on its tentacle on the floor. Oh, man. Okay, Clytus is up. All right, well, I'll get up, I guess. Um, is there any point flanking her? Is Jugs threatening her at all? No. He's... I'm probably not close enough. No, yeah. he's not quite well, then I'm just going to get up and hit her. Hit. There we go. Hit. Didn't even need it. And then I'm going to take the... Uh, smite. The smite. Okay, so... 41. 41. She's still up. Damn it. Does she appear to be hurt? <laughs> Hard to judge. She's definitely uh, it's hurt. already radiant, at least. Yeah. Uh, Adrin. Okay. Um, I guess I'll wail four times. Yep. Yeah. 
miss. Hip. All right. 30. 30. Okay. Um, um, I'm sorry. Did you want to do something else? <laughs> no, no, I'm fine. I'm good. Okay. Uh, Rictavio, uh, yeah, he's gonna cast a healing spell on himself after seeing what has happened to his tiger. He's lost two pets now in the space of 12 hours. He's not feeling very good. Uh, uh, let me just roll here what he gets. Ah, actually be quicker. All right, so yeah, he badly needed that. Um, he doesn't want to get whacked with a branch root, so he's going to stay within its threat area here and work his way around so that he can flank. He wants to take the fight directly to her now. He pulls at his sword cane. Okay, uh, Morgantha. She now, uh, let's see. Actually, she's still got her eye bite going concentration so she is going to direct her attack on you again Clytus she make a concentration save then for against uh, oh yeah she his just attacks took, right oh yeah um, you're right three attacks oh yeah she, she yep. well no because it's three separate rolls She's right it's three separate rolls um, oh. but so so hang on so one of them was 29 though right the big one no it was half of the damage well, no, so one of them was a smite. One of them was a smite attack, right? Tim. They were uh, yeah, both of them were smite attacks. I made two attacks. So and I used smite on each. So, so it would have been 17... twelve plus seven and fifteen plus seven. Oh yeah. No, be, so be, nineteen. Be twelve plus five. Twelve plus five. Well, and twelve 15, plus five. And then fifteen nine. plus nine. Yeah. Fifteen four. So she's got to make a DC twelve. Yep. The second one would be DC twelve. And she still needs to make a DC 10 on the other one, too. So yeah, DC 10, DC 12. So she made the first one, uh, which I really, well, she really wishes she would have gotten that roll for her. The second one. Um, concentration. Oh, crap. What is the ability on that? Constitution. Constitution, yep. Okay, so 18. Oh, so she passes both. Okay. All right. Uh, so she continues to maintain her eye bite. Uh, she is going to, well, since you're right there and waking thing, waking him up right away, uh, this time she's going to try and sicken you. So um, you need to make a wisdom saving throw. Clytus. Oh, not drugs? Okay. Yeah. Now you're the one that's dealing all the damage to her. Yeah. Uh, oh. <laughs> it's 14 at least 14 is unfortunately not quite enough um, I can't I can't buy a saving throw <laughs> so what does that do to me alright you are sickened basically you have disadvantage on attack rolls and ability checks uh, at the end of each of your turn you can make another wisdom saving throw to throw it off flank with me man I'm working on it and yeah she doesn't like the sound of that so she's going to move <laughs> over here uh jugs it's your turn all right still move over. Move just really, here well you can actually flank with her yeah right? actually yeah. it doesn't that doesn't really help her much because you can <laughs> enter a threatened area without a problem so yeah but i'm gonna move to there first okay and then cast cone of cold on her oh okay ah. good idea don't flank and then do the cone of cold <laughs> yeah that's, that's a nice idea. All right, so first she's got to make a saving throw, which she fails. Yay! Whoa, so she... Okay, so... she got, okay, so... got a DC 20. Actually, she only had 27 hit points total. Oh. Nice. So Damn. you freeze her ass into oblivion, and you break the coven again. They no longer yeah. have the coven powers. Yeah. Oh, my God. Well, thank you. Also, doesn't that... Uh, I think... For fun, uh, not that it actually matters, but if you kill someone with Cone of Cold, 
uh, they turn into a frozen statue until it thaws. Oh! There's a frozen <laughs> statue of her. <laughs> it doesn't really do anything, but it's kind of cool. Yeah. So, am I still am sickened, I still or was that dropped because the concentration is gone? Uh, that would be, you'd be gone. It would be gone. Cool. So is the tree stop animating because of the coven powers now? I hope. Is it what? <laughs> the tree's going to stop animating now because the coven powers are gone. Uh, that doesn't have anything to do with the coven. Damn it. Damn it. <laughs> But right, well, I will as a, my move to there. So. Now you flank her. <laughs> <laughs> Just We're in case. the statue of her. And she's got a frozen dream pastry in her hand. <laughs> it's like a frozen Pop-Tart. Okay. Wow. Margantha's brought down. Uh, Rowan is up. Okay. And Bella, you hear shriek and fury. That will bite me. <laughs> Somebody. I'm gonna, uh, move there and damn, where did it go? On um, Baba. Okay, flame strike. Yeah. Dexterity hit, save. This time. <laughs> 17 do it please what no it's she needs to make a deck save you don't oh, have an oh, attack no, roll deck save. Never mind. Yeah. oh okay so uh, and nine. nope 15 wouldn't be enough to make it so she takes nice. 17 fire damage and 9 radiant damage so 20 so Rictavio and I both have to make saving throws alright uh, okay. yep 10 foot radius Oh man uh, Rictavio. You can do it on yourself too. Yep. Yeah, you just did it on yourself too. Well, he could have put it like here and not had sure. it hit him. Sure. Yeah, can I? Yeah. Or he could have even casted it like here and not had it hit Rictavio or him. <laughs> yeah, so, I got both. both well, you them. would know. You would know um, what your spell does, so I mean, if you wanted to yeah. cast something else, yeah. you could. Let's adjust. Let's do it like in the middle, so I catch both of these. No, it's, it's not that big. big. It's, it's fine. On me is okay, and, and then Baba. Right. I don't want to catch Rictavio with it. Okay. Yeah, so it just hits Adrian and Baba. All you right. You would do that because you would know. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I guess you would make a save. Uh, would you would make your save, Adrian? So you would only take half. Adrian did. He did. Oh, okay. Oh, that's the only damage you took. Okay. Uh, all right. He doesn't take damage from that because it's a dex. All right. Come on, Invisible Wizard, win! <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's the tiger. He's dead. Sorry. Um. Well, actually, this might work. Well, it depends on if he can move it. Is it stationary? No, it's instantaneous. Okay. Uh, twenty foot radius. Yeah, that'll work. Uh, he's gonna center an ice storm on this massive hut. <laughs> nice. Uh, basically a, t a twenty foot radius uh, area, a forty foot high cylinder of ice, uh, hailing rock hard ice, pounds into the you know, thatched roof and tentacles of this thing, and you see it kind of staggering around and. <laughs> Uh, let's see, 2d8 plus 4d6. Twenty-nine points of damage on it. That didn't seem to do all that much. <laughs> Shit. Better than nothing. Yeah. Holy crap! Does this thing have a lot of hit points? <laughs> but it lasts a long time, though. It keeps going, right? Um. It's instantaneous duration. Oh. Why is this such a high? Wait a minute. Not ice storm. We did this last time, and you said, "Oh, it was supposed to last longer or something." Maybe I was thinking of something else. Two d 
Yeah, I don't know why I thought that. It's instantaneous. Was I thinking of a different oh, spell? Terrain becomes difficulty until the end of your next turn. Yeah, so That's right it. right underneath it, it's... Um, yeah. yeah. Oops. He's on a different level here. Yeah, and he obviously moved under, out from underneath it. <laughs> um, okay, Bella. Uh, she can't cast Lightning Bolt. Too bad for her. Uh, hang on, I gotta pull up the non becovened version of her here. All right. She shrieks in fury and disappears. Yeah, run away. Yeah, after the death of her sister, she's not gonna take any chances. Um, yeah, she's dead. Um, okay, now Babala Saga is really, she's looking around and sees herself surrounded. She actually vanishes in a poof of mist and reappears in the doorway of her hut. And uh, she says, crush them! And uh, it takes a five foot step forward, or you want to call it that? Thud, thud, thud. And uh, first attacks Rictavio. Hits Rictavio. Dealing. Ouch. Mm. 32 points of damage to Rictavio. <laughs> He's still up, but barely. Um, and it actually kind of steps over him and moves to attack uh, Adrin and Rowan as well. Um, does a 21 hit you, Adrin? You bet. Uh, 23 points from that tentacle. And Rowan... Does an 18 hit you? Uh, yeah, 16. But roll again, because I'm going to do a warding flare. Okay. Put you at disadvantage. Does a 25 hit you? Damn. Oh, my God. It's worth a shot. Yes, it have, is. I have 23 points, so I'm down. Okay. Uh, oh. Ouch. Yikes, things aren't looking great here. Uh, Kalaitis is up. Um, let's see. Can I get... Oh. There we go. Yeah, I can get there. I get to the... Um, this root and start smacking it. Okay. I'm not doing damage on specific areas, but just make normal That's attacks. fine. I just want to hit it. Uh, let's see, it's AC is 16. Two hits. So two hits. And I will go ahead and add one more. Oh, there we go, two, so it'll be three, 3d4, 3d8, sorry. So, whittling it down. <laughs> 44. Yeah. Yeah, you make a few little dents in the tentacle. Uh, Adrin is up. I'm going to run up the tree and into the door and be right next to her. Okay. She, like, backs away with her eyes wide. She was not expecting you to do that. So she's actually in the hut. Okay. So, so I'm going to punch the crap out of her. So, yeah, you'd be right in the doorway. Uh, she is right there in front of you. Nice. Uh, those all hit. Nice. 27, 39, 47. <laughs> she had 46 hit points. Oh, <laughs> awesome. 
<laughs> oh, she was absolutely not expecting that. She you, <laughs> blood just spatters on her mouth, and she falls back on what looks like this really nasty, bloody bathtub. It was actually filled with blood already. Mm. Um, but she falls back into it, and you see her eyes just like <sighs> staring at you. And you feel you actually notice two things. One, uh, while you're in here, you see there's this great green glow coming from between the floorboards of this place. And as she falls over, that glow kind of sputters a bit. And the whole tree just kind of rocks and shifts and just <laughs> collapses on the ground with the roots splayed out in all directions. Sweet. Wow. And long story short, you kill all the scarecrows that were coming. So. <laughs> <laughs> whoa okay yeah that thing if you wouldn't have killed her um that thing had 300 Fire. some hit points 300 and some uh 325 to be precise wow holy right. shit yeah, I'm gonna good job away. adrin <laughs> i'm gonna run over and see if i can uh, revive the tiger before it's dead dead or or rowan you know um <laughs> no we're worried about the tiger not you <laughs> Well, yeah. you know, I, I got time. We'll, yeah, we'll we to it. Um, <laughs> I'll get there. Rick Tavio can well, heal one of them, too. Rick Tavio, um, he says, I, I do have a raised dead scroll. I have raised yeah, dead. Yeah, but is, he, is, he, is anybody dead dead? Well, the, the tiger long. is, well, tiger doesn't get really oh. death saves, so. But. Yeah. I actually have raised dead, uh, like prepared for today. Oh, expecting to die, were we? <laughs> well, well you I, weren't expecting I, to. I go over and tap uh, Rowan for five. I give him five hit points by touching him. And I had I had that and greater restoration for my fifth level spells. So, all right, I'll oh. go over there and I'll. Raise the tiger. It's the eye of the tiger. Uh, the morning lord's power courses through your hands, and the tiger growls a bit, purrs a bit, and stands up and <laughs> shakes. And uh, Rictavio thanks you profusely for that selfless gift of generosity. Uh, knowing... uh, I need to know before we... Uh are done for the night is that green glowing one of those uh orbs or whatever from the uh, uh you don't know because we're ending it right here um i'm, I'm not gonna I do to the whole... look at it <laughs> <laughs> but it's definitely something under the floorboards so yeah i think we definitely this is a good spot to end it because yeah. we don't want to take this any longer it's a long session but uh that was fun <laughs> wow two two real kind of nail-biting combats there in one one evening yeah. So uh, we'll pick up next time, and uh, you let you explore this uh, the inside of this hut, and uh, see where you go from there. All right. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a good night, everybody. Yep. Good night. Yep. Uh, good night, everyone. Bye. Bye.